and we are leaving the before times. Hello. Good day, good evening, good night. Hello, everyone. We're back. It's Studio Omega, and we're streaming again. And we're about to embark on a new blue, new blue stream series. New blue. And we're going to play some Power Wash Simulator. And this will be co-op in a second. But I have to actually start the job to get in there. But let me know, everybody, if all our audios are bounced out. I am Omega. You are seeing my POV. Uh, Lucky Bill will be with us in a second. And we're just going to Power Wash some stuff. This is an idea cooked up uh, just last week. I suggested it, and Lucky really liked it. I like the idea of Power Wash and Chill, y'all. Yeah, no, this game's great. Um, I've uh, I did clear my save so to restart career at zero, but uh, I've Hello. completed the the career entirely. And before starting this stream series, I had 126 hours in this game. So, oh. um, yeah, uh, I did the full campaign and I did a lot of uh, other stuff. That number is probably skewed because there were times where I would just like leave it sit for an hour while I did something else and then go back to power washing. But it's a very relaxing game. It's got a great vibe. And it figured it'd be a good idea. Uh, and it's been especially prescient because, as you may have noticed, chat, I'll also hit the start job so I can activate co-op. And then Lucky from his main menu should be able to just join me. But let's do co-op on. Confirm. And actually, I can... It says I can invite, so let's... Yeah, do an invite, please. I have okay. no idea what I'm doing. All right. It says invitation is sent. I'm adjoining. All right. So, this is Power Wash Simulator. We're going to Power Wash some stuff. But, yes, you'll notice there was no... Uh, bloop, there he is. Hi! It him. Uh, so, there was no Less Like FGO this week. I was not feeling super well Friday, and it was going to be really be a lean, lean, mean show. Yeah, we get to do this. We are unharmed. The power wash suit is that powerful. Oh, that's my auto. There we go. We're actually being pushed back by this. That's great. That's a lot of power. Well, yeah, now that we are clean. Yeah. We're ready to get started on this. So we have a lot of different tools. This will probably go by a lot faster with two people. As, as you can see, I've already technically ended up accidentally getting started on these, uh, the body and the tires here. Someone please tell me what the fuck our van did to get, like, this fucked up. Well, so this will become clear because there will be uh, some... There's, there is a plot to this game. It goes places. Uh, but I believe the town is called, like, Muxbridge or something. Uh, it's next to a volcano. Which, by the way, technically I believe means we are in the Pacific Northwest somewhere. Because they talk about the Ring of Fire at one point. Um, so, there's a lot of, like, ash and mud and crap in the air doing all of this. But yeah, we're here to, to chill, because uh, I've not been feeling super great this this past week. I'm still a little, like, groggy and tired. Well, I may just not be sleeping well, because my mattress is a piece of shit. But, uh, chat, you're going to hear a lot of uh, power washing sounds, so let me know if uh, our, our audio is not balanced against the sound of hoses coming to my Elgato, so I can adjust that. Uh, some of it, I think, is the pollening, uh, but also, like, I just, uh, like, I've, I've, I think I may have genuinely, like, caught a bug really quick, because, like, my stomach was bothering me, uh, uh, late last week, and that really took a lot out of me, so I may actually have been down with something for, uh, for a couple of days. Get low! Get yeah, low yeah. Yeah, who's a dirty girl? You're a dirty girl. Yes, you'll see, chat, we have a wide variety of very funny tools with this to power wash, but we're doing very basic shit right now. <laughs> Namely, we are washing off our fucking van. Uh, what's the button? There it is, okay. Yeah, there's a button to show you dirt. No, this game is a very fucking zen experience. Just the just the methodical going back and forth. Yeah. 
I don't know if that was with Otto seeing fucking Omega Gremlin jump up there, but sure. Oh, you're going to see some, some powerful ups in this series. <laughs> but me cleaning the roof will be very methodical. Side here. I have actually done a little. Uh, technically I get my not. purple. Oh, are you purple right now? No, you're blue. Okay, I gotta get fixed at some point. Okay. Because I don't think, because I let's say I have money, so I don't think I started a new one. But I. Uh, yeah, I'm, this 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 file is down to like twenty three bucks on my end. But I have actually, uh, not power wash, because that's actually, you've got, like, the built-in soap assistance, which this is, um, and other stuff, like heated water. But I've pressure washed before. It requires a, a methodical purpose. Uh, though, uh, in real life, your, uh, pressure washing nozzles are, uh, a lot tighter than this. Also, good chance of damaging something. Yes, uh, that's another thing. You'll you'll never see us accidentally blast the paint off our own van or um, <laughs> blow out anybody's windows, which a high-powered pressure washer can do. Destroy flower beds. Uh, you know, if you if you ever rocks. actually hit your lawn with a with a, the pressure washer, that's gonna really fuck it up. Don't gotta worry about that. Okay. Now nah, we uh, good. Once the roof's done, looks like. And we'll also receive text messages on the side, which continues the plot. You can follow along the home chat. But, uh, our, yeah. This game starts with our good buddy, Harper Shaw, uh, finding a dirty-ass van for us to clean up and take on our power washing services. Us, just the faceless cleaner, is here to help this town in trouble, I guess. This town, it's a dirty town. It needs to be cleansed. The cleansing will commence. Also, it doesn't actually happen in fucking power washing. You just get, you know, 99% done and the rest of the advantages. Don't know how that works. Yeah. Uh, but it's convenient for this game. Uh, I'm going to guess the front grill. Because I need a little of this. Oh, yeah, I see it. Get in there. Get in there. Yeah. Oh, and when you get done here, like, your last three things, it lets you know. So we got bumpers. I guess that means the back bumper. No, the back bumper is all done. So it's the front bumper that's not done all the way. Yes, it is. Let's get down there. I got the tire, and I guess it's the other mirror. Bumper? Yeah, which one here? This one. All right. Boom! Wait. Percent 99 percent. Oh. No. What are we missing? Yeah, it's done. It says 99 percent. Oh, okay. I know. But now we see the time lapse. The beautiful oh, completion is. of all our work. All right. I love the time lapse. Yeah, it's a great feature. It's freaking out a little for me. It gets a little stuttery sometimes. Is does it end with you just up in the fucking air? No, I see the end frame on on, on my my end. We're we're both standing there. Weird. On mine, one of us is standing right, the other one us is just in the fucking roof. Weird. Very. Okay, well let's continue. Right up. Next operation. The back garden. Yay. Uh, let me look at uh, if there's anything we can pick up on the market. Uh, so let's we got see a normal, here. normal washer. We can't do the advanced one yet. I'm going to get started on the fence. All right. Let's buy me some fucking extensions. Cleaner just yet. Okay. Oh, that shot. Let me, let me ask 
this is my inventory. Okay, yeah, so I need to get more cash so I can do more more customization. I'll work on the edging. But yeah, this is what we were talking about earlier. This this grass texture, if you were you were actually power blasting this. Uh, well your grass is gone. Yeah, like if on this wood you use the one that uh too high uh too much velocity, you would just be carving your initials into this wood. Yeah. Hot pressure is no joke, everyone, please. Be careful when using power wash. Do not do not power wash your friends. Yes. Unless your friends happen to be like a nine foot robot? Maybe. Other than that, do not. Yeah. Note the cell, send Claymore through the car wash. That's one way to get clean. Uh, we also then do um, Singletary for uh, this weekend. Dallas had religious obligations. Yes. Timely plans. We talked about doing some other stuff, but uh, yeah, he did warn us well ahead of time. Yeah. Done. Yeah, we talked about doing some other stuff, but mostly just hung out, watched YouTube videos, played Helldivers. Yep. Congratulations, everyone. The war has been won. The Terminants are contained in the. Automatons are no more. They will never come back again. The Terminants will never escape. And there will not be some mysterious Thurm Force to suddenly show up and ruin everyone's day. Peace forever and eternal. Yeah, we're not even going to need that new war bond to drop Thursday. Yeah. It'd be great. This is I'm mentioning they're just going to, you know, shut down the servers any day now. Any day. That's yeah, the, the greatest one month of video game release ever. <laughs> I will though say though, like I do think this is a good time to like put down Hell Divers for a little bit. Just you know, it's time for my vacation. I did uh I did my sweet sweet service. I need to I need to take a break. Yeah. some 14 earlier today, but had to be careful because my connection was being very sketchy. Uh, uh, which is fine when you're uh, when you're DPSing a Trials Roulette, but if I was going to, like, level healer or something, that would be a problem if I'm DCing. Oh, yeah, that would be. And go work on this fence over here. I just want to know how everything else is filthy and the house is pristine. Who did what? How? Yeah, I don't actually know. There may be a text about it later. I'm trying to remember. Like, did, have we been, you know, maintaining the house and then just forgot to do the backyard? I think, if I remember correctly, this house was for sale and they only fucking did pictures of the house. So maybe they only flipped the house and said, nah, the backyard's not our problem. I don't know. Maybe. I've, uh, I've seen some houses that are like that. Oh, yeah. No, but in the meantime of uh, me not playing um, Helldivers and uh, other games, I decided to pick up in Shrouded, which um, has, been, has very high reviews, and I can see why. Uh, Loft said he might be picking it up later, so I might try with him later. But it's another one of them survival crafty kind of games. I'm all like, yeah, that's, that's my jam. You know what I like. And the base building is actually pretty goo. It's not the best, but it's better than most. So this please is lucky. Running around playing a barbarian named Jiro. Going around hitting everything with a fucking giant hammer. Yep, as you do. I, I mean, I admit it's, I think, because I've been in such a, a weird, like, low-energy funk. Uh, most of my gaming time has been spent on 
hell diving 14 or uh, once again playing so many fucking hours of Slay the Spire. I don't know, guys. Deck building roguelikes, it's like the thing for me. You want me to build decks of cards that have strategy? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, I'm actually kind of having a love-hate relationship here with uh, Roguelike. For uh, PlayStation Plus, the one of the games of the month was uh, Skull, the Hero Slayer. Oh, which yes. is yeah. It's a um, Korean-made um, pixel um, Roguelike, and which you start off as a small skeleton boy who has to progress through um, the human kingdom to, you know, stop the heroes from, you know, and, you know, rescue the Demon King. Um... And it's fun, I enjoy it, but at the same time, I hate roguelites. I really do hate roguelites. There's something about just losing all my progression and all my hard work just to have to do it again that just gets under my skin. Like, I'm still playing, I'm still playing it. Like, their gameplay loop is good enough that I'm like, all right, one more fucking run. And that's how they get you. Yeah. They always get you with the, uh, like, you can, I can do it next time. But I, I see what you're doing to me, and I hate it. Yeah, that's me with Slay the Spire. Like, I like deck builders. I like card games, you know. And so, like, okay, yeah, sure, we'll collect. Uh, at the very least, um, I feel like, and admittedly, a lot of roguelikes have this, but like, Slay the Spire is like, okay, if you clear the third, the the third, the final boss of the third act, that you know, ends a loop. You you punch the heart of the spire and you go back to square one. So like, it's it's the kind of narrative where it is inherently a loop anyway. So mm -hmm. like resetting myself doesn't always feel bad, but, like, it's definitely one of those things where I'm just, like, sometimes I'm, like, I get a bad encounter, and I'm just, like, God, this enemy fucking sucks. What do you expect me to do about this? Um, you know, and it's, like, well, it's a roguelike, so uh, die and go over. Which, like, isn't bad game design if you're building your game that way, but, man, it's annoying. It's hella annoying, and it's, like, there's something, like, I don't necessarily mind the loot mechanic. I just never, I have never liked the lose your shit and the RNG of you have to find good shit along the way. If you don't, you're boned. If you do, if you're not good at this game, you're still boned. I'm just like, the uh, Skull the Hero Slayer does have, like, some permanent progression. Like, you can get upgrades. But I have died, like, so many times that I'm starting to max out some of the upgrades and I'm not getting any fucking further in the game. I've only beaten the second boss yeah i've made it to the third area the, the bio lab because like i'm good like i've gotten good enough that i can beat the first boss no problem easy peasy lemon squeezy i know all this tells i know it's like, very simple the problem comes in the next area where because um in, in uh skull the hero slayer you have basically two types you have two boss encounters first is your mini boss where you fight a hero uh, an adventurer party and as you go up in the game, they just add more and more adventurers, so you have more and more people on screen just doing shit that you really don't fucking want them to. I'm just like, I can't, I can't handle it all. And then you have the actual bosses. The actual boss designs, pretty cool. I like them. Like, I like fighting the bosses. I genuinely do. But it's the problem of I have to have, like, certain stuff at the point, otherwise I'm gonna have a fucking bad time. Like, I have to even make enough health. I have to make sure the items that I have synergize well, because that's something I do like. Um, in Skull the Hero Slayer, you basically pick up items, and they each have their own effect, but they also have a little tag, which would be like, you know, excessive bleeding, hidden blade and stuff. And if you can, like, pair up items that have those same modifiers, you get, like, set bonuses. I'm like, oh no, that's my jam! Mm, yeah. So. But, but if you're getting random-ass items that don't mesh together, well, guess what? You're a little fucking screwed because you're not getting the good bonuses you need to do stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, no. I mean, that's... It, it, Slay the Spire does it in the format of, of building your deck of cards, but I completely understand that. There, I've had some runs go sour because it's just like, well, guess what? I really needed this card to synergize with these other four cards I own, but I never fucking found it, so... Uh, or, you know, this type of, like, relic item I pick up that enhances my cards. Well, I didn't find it, so, uh, this run Get just sucks. Up. We're just gonna die. We're gonna run into a boss that, uh, gives you five turns before it basically, uh, does all the damage to you and you fucking die. And it's like, the other mechanic in, um, Skull the Hero Slayer is that you have skulls. Basically, you can equip two skulls and you can basically equip different classes by swapping through them. And each have their own skills. Uh, 
it's something that I, I genuinely enjoy because there's fun skulls. Like, you can get become, like, living armor, samurai, ninja. You become the monkey king. There's a monkey king skull. I love it. It's so fucking That's stupid. Funny, yeah. Um, you can get the Hell Rider, where you literally become Ghost Rider, and you can run around on a pixel motorcycle, and like, yeah! Uh-oh. Says the game session was closed by the host. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, it says you're not here anymore. Let me see. I quit, Omega! Goodbye! Throw my power washer in the ground. Let me make sure to re-enable co-op. Not sure what's up with that. OBS fine? Yeah, OBS is fine. I will re-invite you. Let me take this opportunity to open up the chat here. Chat's just chilling as far as I know, but yes, I've sent you a new invite. It's weird, I didn't see any signs like my network went down, but like I said, my... Sometimes it's the 14 side in the servers, but my connection has been a little spotty today. But we are streaming my POV, so we don't have as much of a problem there. Let me try this. See if it let me in. And like I said, I think there's like maybe like four or five bosses, five or six, and I'm just like, oh, I can't get past. I haven't even. I mean, I like I can barely beat the second boss because they always do that thing that I freaking hate. It's like, all right, you beat the boss. Oh wait, behold, they power up, fill up their health bar, and now they're going for round two. I'm like, son of a bitches, I don't ever get a round two. All right, I'm back. Yeah. I'm sorry, I lied, I didn't quit. You just had to take your union mandated uh, lunch break. The burrito truck, uh, We didn't. I didn't hear the sound because I was too busy. I have my AirPods in, but you heard the burrito <laughs> truck jingle and you just had to leave. It was just da -da 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 -da. I was gone. I'm gonna be real. If everyone, if I ever heard that sound and saw that, and that there was like some sort of burrito shit, I would fucking run after that bad as I am. You would like know. I mean, I'm pretty legal. sure they are. I'm not. You know, I'm not 100 percent sure if they got a jingle, but I'm pretty sure I've seen that. You know, go out that or like the 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 Laka Garacha sound. Ba da 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 da. Ba da 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 da. Mm -hmm. you know, trims up here. Yes, I did the yellow trim. Haven't cleared the deck yet, but going the roundabout way. But yeah, that actually, uh, I wasn't thinking too much about that game, but uh, it's, on the, it's on the monthly. I'll check it out. It's it's not a bad game. If you like roguelites, I think you'll enjoy it. But if you're kind of meh on roguelites, like like I am, it's it's kind of hit or miss. Like. Like I said, I haven't stopped playing the game. I was playing the game before we uh, we started this, yeah. trying to get one more run in. And right. like that's why I want to say it's a good game, despite me not liking roguelites. I'm still like one more run. Yeah, that's how that's, I. That's, that's why I do the stuff. Yeah. Because uh, I will say, I think it was technically last month for like PS Plus Extra. Uh, there was another game that was very similar to Slay the Spire called like Rogue Book that came out. Um, I played that a little bit. Um, my, like, two-cent review on that is it made me want to go back and play Slay the Spire instead. Um, <laughs> it's, like, it's okay, and it's got probably some interesting, like, deeper mechanics. Um, it's got kind of a thing where you, like, spend resources to, like, fill in the map, which is a bunch of hexes in, like, a storybook style. So you, like, use magic ink and, like, draw a little circle of guys or draw a line to encounters. But it's still a deck-building uh, roguelike and, like... It doesn't seem like actually doing the map thing matters. It's mostly just like, well, do you have enough ink and stuff to unlock enough encounters to, you know, get your stuff and fight the elites and the boss and the blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, ah, I'm like, other games better. Nah, another game I did pick up um, before we, I did pick up Sifu. I did talk about that. Sifu also has some roguelike elements in it, I want to say. Not, 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 not like full roguelike, but it's the like roguelike light. Um, for those of you who don't know, Sifu is a game, oh, I had the, was it Southpaw? I, I can't remember. That's a, that sounds right. Uh, developed by Southpaw, and you basically play a, um, a Kung Fu revenge story. And the game is actually fairly technical in how you do moves. You can just smash, like, you know, square for light attacks and triangle for heavy attacks. But if you push, like, up-down square, you'll do a palm strike. If you push up-down triangle, you'll do a, um, uh, a, a kick sweep. 
and you can unlock other ones. So there's like little fighting move combinations in the, in there, but the game is hard. I am playing on like the easiest difficulty with the fucking, you know, make it easier modifiers going and I'm still getting my ass kicked. Now, the thing about Sifu is, is kind of the point of the game is to get your ass kicked. Um, they have a mechanic that if you go down, you don't actually die and restart. You have the option to continue and you go up in age. And as you go up in age, you have the ability to like unlock new abilities and, um, well, I don't know if you can unlock new abilities, but, um, I think I'm not entirely sure what if you like, it's a positive for you to go up in age, but, um, cause I do know there are some upgrades that are locked behind age, like, um, uh, one of the upgrades you can get is get um, increased weapon durability, but I believe you get locked out of that if you pass the age of 25. But, um, and this is another game I like, but again, it's one of those other games I'm like, I don't know if uh, this game is just too hard for me or if I just suck. Because, um, like many games that are embracing this nowadays, you have your health bar and then you have your uh, stagger bar. Or, what do they call it? Was it stagger? It's a fucking stagger bar. And, uh, the, you know, everyone has them. You have, you have the, the mooks have it, you know, many bosses have it, and the bosses have it. And every time I'm fighting and I'm trying to throw down, it feels like they will fill up my stagger bar in, like, three hits, and I have to wail on them for 15 minutes to, uh, get a mini bosses or a bosses, um, bar fool and this this and this becomes a pain in certain areas like in the first area the stacks where you basically got to go rough fight someone called the botanist um like i was just trying to play on normal and there's just a point at the um like the mid like a mid boss point where it was just a, a dude who just comes out and fights you but he was like an elite mook and he just cooked my ass because i could not get him to stagger and anytime he punched me it's like there goes a third of my fucking health i'm just like what am i supposed to do because much like um how you have a special um i got closed from the hosting okay That's well fuck you guys weird. i heard the burrito truck speaking to me yeah it just it just seems like it'll it'll sometimes just fucking turn off co-op weird Maybe we're just having a bad evening. Might be having a bad evening, but I can keep talking about seafood. But like, like um, how you have a like a fighting move, fighting game, um, fighting game combinations for attack. While you do have you do things like block, you have a block into parry, and then you also have a um, you know a dodge. You also have something called your high guard and your low guard, where you basically hit um, L one and then up or down, which lets you you know dodge high attacks or lower attacks. And the problem with this is, this sounds like pretty cool and it's not the hardest, well, it's not hard to pull off, but some of these guys move so fucking fast. I'm like, I don't know what's happening. We're too Kung Fu, help. Yeah, that's definitely like in general, that's the thing that like to me, and I get that like for some people that's part, part of the mystery. Like for people who are like really into FromSoft games, they're like, oh no, every boss is easy if you just do them enough that you learn all their tells and you know what you have to do. Um, I don't mind, like, learn through doing, but at the same time, I feel a lot more comfortable because, at least when it feels like in the specific way games are designed, I just saw me, like, go from prone to standing up, like, four times. I was trying to remember what my height was. <laughs> uh, the little icon's a little blocked out on my screen right now. I can see it, though. Um, I'll just remember that for future. But, like, when it feels like, because a, a lot of games that are, like, this rogue style or Soulsborne style that are very like iterative a lot of them feel like they want you to do something specific um like they're like oh no there's an intended absolute uh way you're supposed to do this but we won't tell you you just have to figure it out i don't like that i don't like trial and error gameplay which turns me off a lot of these games like i don't want to be throwing myself out there trying to f figure out stuff when i feel like you the game designer had something in mind for this boss and there are definitely, like, Soulsborne bosses in some other games I've played that are like, no, 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 you got to do this a certain way. And we won't tell you what that way is, though, so until you figure it out, you're going to get clowned on. 
Uh, yeah, never like been the, a fan of that the, game design. Yeah, like the first boss, uh, the botanist. Um, he has a like in the, in his phase one, he's just in his drug flower garden, and you just fight him normally. But then he gets to a phase two, and he pulls out a machete. And uh, guess what? Uh, it's really bad to get guard against machetes. Yeah. I didn't realize this until like my last turn, but there are fucking like bamboo sticks like littered around the area you can pick, so you can go weapon to weapon with them. New, I had no idea about that. I've been trying to you know just fight him mano a mano and not having any fucking help help with it. Yeah, no, like no love. That was one of those things that just makes me wonder: Am I just bad at video games? Like, yeah, it's a question that I feel like I myself and many other gamers have to uh, to answer. Like, you know, are am I just am I just bad at games? The answer is probably not. No, like I've I do some stuff that's gotten pretty good. But no, I like, I do think Sifu is intended to be hard, and I just, so I don't necessarily decry that. It's just one of those things that I feel like... It's just one of those things that I feel like I have to put on such a baby mode just to have a sense of confidence. Because I would like to beat this game without becoming, like, 60 years old. Yeah. You know, because I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure there's a fucking story in here about, you know, Psycho Revenge and all that crazy stuff. Because that's what the story is. Basically, I do love the pro... Like, this game, this game has some pretty good cinema in it, I will say. Like, you start off the game as the antagonist, you know, storming the fucking, storming your family's, um, home. And you take out your, your, uh, your father, and then, you know, the, your father, the, you, you then switch to, um, switch to, uh, the protagonist. And a fucking kung fu opening century where you're, like, where they slowly teach you a few moves while they play credits. I'm like, yeah... No, so it's it's cinema as fuck, and I love it for that. Like, there's a in the first area, there's a section where you you come into a hallway of dudes, and this game's usually you know, 3D, but in this hallway section it becomes 2D, so you just see all the guys running at you as you do kung fu at them. I'm like, yeah, no, that's like, good. no, that's a good shit. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I've I've been in a funk, so I have not yet gone back to P3 Reloaded, which I do want to do, but I don't know. I may I may have lost the mood and may need to like wait till I'm back in that that mind mindset grind set. Um, because I spent a lot of my brain power juice on Rebirth, and like I'm I'm I feel pretty tapped in that department for now. Oh, here's the park warden. He's gonna call me Dirt Finder General. Like like I'm some kind of inquisitor. But, uh, I've, you know, been thinking about doing other stuff, and, uh, at least on Amazon, it does appear that the, the normal version of Unicorn Overlord is on sale, so that might be a pretty easy pickup for me, because that's still in my, my, technically not even in my backlog, because I don't own it yet, but, like, I know that, the you know, others have been vibing on it and are done, and I'm like, uh, I could probably use a switch up. I am, I'm on one of the final quests, I don't know if it's the final quest, but it's called, the quest I'm on is called Unicorn Overlord, I've, like, but I took that side to take a break from it. Yeah. Because well, Unicorn Overlord is, like, it's not, like, it's another one of those games where it's... Unicorn Overlord is not a hard game, but they throw so many options and... Uh, options and what's the word? possibilities at you that sometimes you just go, like, what if I want to, like, redo everything that I've been doing up to this point? And I'm just like, shit. Yeah. It's like, what if I want to make a fucking Dragon hole based team and make that work? How would I do that? But, yeah, so... You know, knock on wood, I may just bite the bullet and get into that right away. I do want to say it's it's funny, you know, this probably would have come up on, on the in the what what's up section, but uh over the I think it was over the weekend or at least late last week it did come out. There was some, you know, a collection of interviews about stuff, you know, doing the, the press circuit for uh uh Dawn Trail, I think, but uh Yoshi P said, you know, hey it's been it's been a long time since we did a Final Fantasy Tactics game, you know, because a lot of the guys on um C B U three are from uh, tactics and Vagrant Story. And 12. Uh, yeah, and, and then went on to 12, yeah. It's, yes. But it's, it's like, that, that's, that's I think, where, where a lot of them got their start. And he's like, yeah, it's been a while. We could, use an, we could do another Final Fantasy Tactics. And I'm oh, like, honestly. yeah. Yeah, no. Um, well, who knows? Maybe, like I said, maybe they'll test CAU 3 for it. Because, like I said, I do believe, I bet production would not be as hectic as, uh, well, I don't know. Would they do a like <sighs> 3D or would they go pixel? I, Square doesn't, especially because they did the Pixel remasters, right? Square is not averse to still doing stylized games. 
Um, though they have kind of broken out into doing games in like more advanced 3D modeling where they didn't need to. Um, like, you know, Ever Crisis started as a phone game and they were like, nah, 3D models, new 3D models, in fact. You want young Sephiroth model? Have that. You know, some of those assets were probably for the Battle Royale, you know, first soldier, but still. Um, no, this way. Hey, there's a weird... Your tool shed's at a weird angle with your hedge. You're not giving me a lot of space here. But, yeah, um, I would hope they would go to, like... Because they've still done, you know, triangle strategy and stuff like that. Um, uh, and, you know, so on and so forth. I would hope they go for the, the, the you know, HD 2D kind of stuff that they've done. You know, Octopath Traveler, etc. Because um, I'd love to see it. If they didn't have a fucking, like, publishing deal with, like, Atlas, I'd be like, yo, Vanilla work, team up, square, make it happen, give me some magic. God, that would be... A Final Fantasy Taxes game as brought to you by Vanillaware would be crazy. Mm. Like, even more crazy so than I'm sure Unicorn Overlord already is. No, Unicorn Overlord is very good. Uh, I do know that, obviously, like, plot-wise, people think a lot better of the original Tactics, even though it's very funny that this came up in a lot of that uh, localization debate once again a couple months back about... Uh, I actually think about, like, Unicorn Overload and some other games that um, oh, yeah. the original FFT localization was uh, not good in a lot of places. Yeah, uh, no, the, uh, the main writer was crumbled. like... <laughs> the main writer was kind of, what the fuck about it? Yeah, he's like, people are are, are defending, you know, uh, some of these translations. Uh, nah, guys, it's weird. Weird stuff. <laughs> um, and no, it definitely got, like, crunched at the end there. Um, like, I've heard some people say... Uh, I regret to inform you, chat. I've never gotten very far in the original Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, but uh, it's the, the advanced versions that I've beaten all the way through and put, you know, five billion hours into, especially A2. Uh, but the... That, you know, the... the We could use some additional translation, but I, I would assume that even though that one's the more popular, that if it was actually CBU3... I mean, I could see them going both ways, because, like, 16 setting was very deliberately, like, rolling back on a lot of the, like, additional Final Fantasy stuff. Like, you had Chocobos, you had one Moogle, you had a lot of classic enemies. There was some weird shit, and you obviously had the icons, but, like, none yeah, of the I races see. that, like, 14 is famous for, or Ivalice is famous for, you know, made it in. And uh, Tactics is, is is part of the Ivalice, you know, uh, alliance, part of the, the, the Ivalice compendium. Oh, man. You know what would be fucking crazy? If they made Final Fantasy XIV Tactics and it was based off the Ivalice uh, resistance. Oh, yeah, no. I was actually straight up going to bring that up. I was going to say I'd love to see Final Fantasy, uh, like, e Eorzea Tactics, you know? like. No, that'd be, that'd be sick. Because, like, Eorzea has a really big setting, obviously, because, you know, they've got to give you all these zones to MMO your way through, but, like, there's so much room there um, for you to do stuff off-screen, away from the Warrior of Light. Obviously, there's many, many different time zones you could do this in, but, like, straight up, between the end of 1.0 and the start of AAR, there's about a five-year time skip, I believe. Uh, something like uh, that. Yeah. Like, like yeah. you've got a really long time where there is no Warrior of Light, and the Scions are just kind of doing their own thing. Um, there's loads of stuff going on, like you said, with the, the, the Dalmascan resistance and the other, like, central parts. Yeah, no, I, I was thinking of that because Bajja has been trending for some odd yes. reason. But yeah, no, they even mentioned at some point, like, because, you know, Fran is there, and they actually mentioned, you know, Princess Ash and all that stuff. They're out there doing stuff. It's just like, yeah, I think they would be great. Yeah. yeah, do a uh, fucking 14 tactics and, you know, do, you know... Because that that had let you do the the you know the style that like uh, Tactics Advance did, where your different races have different job pools, some of which are shared. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you could deliberately hearken to like fourteen jobs for your inspiration, which would give you a, a built-in lead-in. You know, um, all you can promote from like your base classes into fucking yeah. yeah I, I, cool. Yeah, no, um, that's how Tactics Advance worked. Like to unlock some jobs, you had to uh, master certain skills at lower level jobs. So you would absolutely have something like. The 14 equivalent would be, well, okay, if you want to unlock Ninja, you have to master three rogue actions of any type first. I actually believe that is how Tactics Advance works, by the way. To unlock Ninja, you have to do, like, I think, like, three thief moves. So, like, 
there's room for all that stuff up, and we know that, like, job stones are fucking rattling around there in some cases. And there's, there's a lot of room for it, and just in general, y'all know me. I love grid-based tactics games. They're really cool. <laughs> I, I admit that, like, I never got... I really love the demo, but I never got really deep in triangle strategy just because of the fucking, like, root paralysis and knowing that there's, like, technically a golden ending, but it's a very specific pain in the ass to do, and I'm just like, ah, this gives me... This gives me stress. The agita, as we say. Yes. Uh, the game's really cool. It's just, like I said, like, plot-wise, I was like, oh, shit, guys, don't tell me that my fucking choices matter that much. I want my choices to matter, but if they matter that much, then I gotta fucking, like, stress about them. I don't want that. I wanna play video games. I will say that is probably one of the greatest weaknesses of Unicorn Overlord, is that it's, um, story, it's overall plot, very bare-boned. Very bare-boned. But also, that means you don't have to think too hard about this stuff, which is relaxing in its own right. Yeah, I think I will probably find it much easier to actually play Unicorn Overlord all the way through, because, like, I'm gonna guess, based on Vanillaware's pr previous games that I've played, uh, it's probably got a lot more to do with, like, character interactions, necessarily, than, like, ah, you must choose, do you save the village or the tower? If you do this, one person will definitely super die, and you can never get them back, but if you do the other one, then somebody else will super die. There's no good choices in life. Fuck you. I'm like, oh, <laughs> but what if I want those two people to not be the die? Well, too bad. We we wrote a fork. But, like, comparing to, like, other vanilla wear games you should definitely play, uh, well, I mean, Grim Grimoire I like a lot, and I would recommend playing it if you like RTS games. But also, like, I, I had to baby rage sometimes on stream. Grim Grimoire's fucking hard. <laughs> They do give you, like, a new permanent upgrade system, and you can, like, grind bonus maps in, in the remaster. Uh, you know, Grim Grimoire once more. Um, and, like, they do have, like, a story mode for absolute, like, baby tier, but, like, even playing on normal, man, some of those maps fucking kicked my ass. Um, I think that uh, that has to do with the fact that it was a PS2 game that very clearly had a truncated story. Um, like, they, as usual, they kind of ran out of budget, and it had to, like... Um, and unfortunately, the game did not sell as well as they wanted to. That's why uh, Grim Grimoire ends with a sequel hook that it never has gone anywhere. Um, and I believe that, like, uh, is it George Kitagawa? The the main writer at Vanillaware, he straight up said, like, uh, yeah, this is why we at Vanillaware have uh, no... We always write our games to be one and done and stop doing sequel hooks because... We tried that once with a game, and then we were very sad when we couldn't actually do the sequel, so we, we just want to just not do that anymore. But, um, so, you know, you can argue whether or not Grim Grimoire is a really good game, but that's very character-driven, obviously. Uh, but 13 Sentinels is, like, that's a, a fucking strategic-ass game. You know, that's 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 got its, its elements as well. But also, like, a huge chunk of that game is just visual novel ass shit you know you're just running around oh. clicking things reading dialogue boxes i know but it's so good it's such a it's such a mind fuck in the best fucking way yeah i know um you and i have both said straight up that like that's one of those games that we'd love to be able to experience from the beginning with fresh eyes over again because it's great seriously chat if you have not buy and play 13 sentinels aegis rim it's an amazing game a phenomenal entry in the mecha genre, but also just a good-ass game. Like, if you like fucking sci-fi mysteries, we got loads of that. Uh, if you want to be a giant like, robot and shoot 9 billion missiles, you can do that. It, I think it literally has almost every, like, sci-fi cliche and reference you can put in it. Like, just about. Yeah, no. It's, uh, and it's full of, it's full of straight-up homages. Like, there's a lot of homages to other mecha series, but also to, like, standard sci-fi. Like, I feel like there are straight up some Terminator vibes in there. There's some oh, no, action, there. like... War of the Worlds, fucking... Yeah. All the greatest hits. Time travel. Oh, God, it's... Yeah. It's like, good. And they make it... It's, it's, it's such a convoluted mess that only clicks into place at the very end. You know? Oh, it has oh. literal mechanics for clicking into place. Like, you will unlock, like, keywords and reactions in some story sections that you can use in other story sections to, like, progress. It's great. Great game. Phenomenal. Shout out to our magical water draining ability. 
Yeah, that's another thing too. Uh, this this is a this is actually a literal retaining pond <laughs> that is not getting filled up. But yeah, no, like Vanillaware makes great games like that, and I am assuming that that Unicorn Overlord is going to be in that similar vein, where it's mostly going to be an excuse to have you do like character beats and meet cool uh, people you like. Kinda. Like, they do, like, unfortunately, I think this is the part where they ran out of money because um, uh, George Kamatami said once again, like, yeah, we put a lot of work into this, but we ran out of money, so I had to fund the rest of it out of my own pocket. And I kind of feel like where that got hit was mostly in the, um, the storytelling parts. I don't want to say it's necessarily, like, you feel like you're missing a chunk of the story. It's just feel like, like certain parts aren't as fleshed out as, uh, as they could be. Like, you do have something called rapport conversations, which are, you know, your fire emblems. You put two people together, you make them fight together enough, you know, they get better at each other, and some of them have conversations with each other. But they're very little. They do let you get an idea of characters' relationships with... Oh, there we go. Uh, get an idea of characters' relationships with each other, but it's it's still very, it's very, still very brief. Like I said, combat, combat's great. I'm gonna use my long boy extension to get really in there. These, these, these retaining pot walls are uh, very, very grubby. Lots of nooks and crannies. Yeah, they are. Yeah, no. Uh, I do not necessarily know if I would recommend watching the Grim Grimoire stream. Like, I, I have a lot of positive nostalgia for that game, and it's, it's, it has very good character moments that are very fun. But like, like I said, there, there are moments where I'm just like, I'm doing that thing where I'm like, I'm getting my ass kicked for, like, no reason. I am following the tips that the game has given me, and I'm getting fucking obliterated, and I am not having a good time. I mostly get over it in the end, um, and I've talked about this. Like, usually when I'm, like, angry or frustrated, I, I like, get really heated really fast, and I let it all out. Um, I do not like to necessarily simmer on stuff if possible, but, like, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a rough game. Sadly, 13 Sentinels is something that I don't... Like, we could stream the entirety of that game. It's mostly plot-based, though, so, like, I would much prefer you guys buy it and play it in your own time. They're games that are for you, you know? Um, but that would be a very, very, like, different type of experience. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Maggie, you just leave a lot of things half done here. What the fuck? Oh, what, uh, what, what's not got? <laughs> the, gr the barbecue. Oh, the barbecue's not done all the way? I thought I got most oh. of it. Yeah, you got most of it, but like, oh, it's remember the detail work. That's right. Okay, let me turn yeah. on this up. Yeah, remember periodically hit that fucking check fucking. Yeah, yeah. I I think the grill was like the first time you got dropped. I could blast oh, this quick. Because I got most of the height detail, but you're right. There are some undersides that are not done and stuff. And sometimes you gotta you gotta juice it up because you gotta get in there because it's it can be really impacted that dirt and grime. Um, having also cleaned some grills in my time, uh, and observed some grills be cleaned, uh, this is also like, what the fuck have you done to this grill? Because <laughs> at some point, this grill is too dirty for you to have been cooking meat on it. You better not have been making burgers and dogs on this. Match food shell. Gas tank is good. Car in the birdhouse. We get everything on the. No, no, there's a side of the lawnmower. It's not complete. Okay. Work. Some uh, objects are weird because, as we said, there is a magical power that you know when you get 90% of the way done, it just finishes. Yeah. So the lawnmower is like um like two pieces. Shed, shed roof, shed walls, windows. Uh, which, by the way, oh. this this kind of like tiny piece of shit shed probably would not want to power wash that. Use a regular hose because, <laughs> like, I, I once again, I've assembled some of these prefab sheds and like had to like break them down and move them and shit. They're not that tough. They're they're made of, of relatively thin like weatherproof plastics. They're not intended to be power washed up. All right, let me check our. Oh, I haven't done the roof of the swing sofa. We got some step edges. 
Oh, one of the stepping stones is also not done. I almost finished the damn pond wall. Let me see if I can actually no. Keep it moving. Keep, keep it moving. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, that's where it all is. There it is. Yeah, got it, got it. All right. So... See, now this this is actually a pain in the butt because there's a lot of like nooks <laughs> and crannies in this group. Boy, you are wow. I'm doing I'm doing some magic. Got it. Yeah. Are are you from the the uh, village hidden in the power washer? Because you were doing some <laughs> fucking ninja moves. Okay. All right. So we got some oh, step left? edges left. Oh boy. Let me... Must be. Oh, must be over there. Oh, I see. Some dirt. Yeah. Doghouse roof? Really? Doghouse roof? Not oh, the water bowl. Yeah, water bowl got some loops left. I don't remember any this. Whatever the roof is made out of, is a real pain in the butt. Two stepping stones. Let me find those. Not that one. Not that one. Oh wait, one. here's one. Yep, got here's it. One. Is it? Oh wait, okay. that one. So just this thing. Oh, it's gonna be like. On the upside down side. Oh, wait, here it is. Right. There it is. is. Yeah! Good job! Yeah. <laughs> Alright, now the time lapse. The beautiful time lapse footage. Yeah, power wash the I windows. Do, I, I do love the time lapse footage. No, the time lapse is great. I, it took me a while to get this until this was actually a free uh, PS Plus game a while back. Um, I think it was it. I don't remember if it was a monthly game or if it was if it's just generally with extra catalog. But I first got tuned into this game because of Markiplier. Uh, he like did a series, which I don't think is fully complete. Uh, which which one do we want to do next? Uh, we got the bungalow, the playground, and the dirt bike. The dirt bike will be very fast. Oh, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do the dirt bike. With two of us here, this is gonna be like four seconds. But like Markiplier has a very you know, strong series on this. Oh, did I did I switch back to my default outfit? I am. I'm I'm blue and yellow again. How dare? Did I change I colors? No, you're red on my paint. You're red on. Yeah, no, I I, sw I just switched back just now. You you are back to also being. Uh, if you switch, you are back to your default yellow and blue. <gasps> uh, let me pull that shit up. Let me see here. Also, speaking of which, we got like I got like four hundred bucks. Is there anything we can pick up? Uh, still haven't gotten enough to unlock or buy that. So you can see, chat. There's a pretty, pretty normal, uh, you know, upgrade system. Do jobs, get money, buy bigger and better power washers. There are a few like story unlocks of stuff, uh, but otherwise, generally, it's we're all pretty normal. Boom. Purple and black. Let's go. Now, he's now we've got the color scheme. I don't know why we're using pressure on. Just throw this in a fucking car. Why didn't you just take this to a car wash? Oh, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, well, I'll, I'll remember to read the text after we're done with the job. I don't know if he, like, spectacularly dirt bike wiped out somewhere or something. Just been riding it hard. Actually, that's a lie. Don't go to car wash under on on you know, that, that you you would get washed as well. Only if you're well, actually I don't know with how dirty this bike was. This guy's biking gear also probably needs a wash. Probably. I'm not even aiming. I'm just kind of going around in circles. Yeah, no, I'm just fucking blasting. Uh, engine, front fender, uh, brake discs. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Well, that was a little. The, the, we're going so fast. The time lapse is very stuttery for me. 
Yeah, I see our arms doing some uh, weird shit. Yeah, very stutter stop. Do love that in 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 my version of the, the final shot though. Uh, I'm like off camera, so it's just you bugging the camera in there. I'm like crouched down <laughs> behind it. That's oh a, yeah, no, I see it. Winners, everyone. I can put four slices of bread in the toaster, but I only eat the slice that pops up first. What the fuck is wrong with your toaster? Oh, uh, it needs to be power washed because he says, uh, Joe Average uh, says that he hasn't cleaned it in 15 years. That's probably why it needed power washing. Don't let your dirt I, get any grained. I have concerns. Like, so, on, uh, a, on a level. Uh, let's do the bungalow. That's the next, next job. Bungalow. 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 Now we gotta we we're we're slowly increasing in scale, Chad. Now we gotta clean a whole ass house. Uh, I'm like, I'll get started on the fucking drive here. Okay. Uh, uh, where do we put our? I got. Uh, yeah, we have the ladder. Ladder. Uh, let's see. Do we just start on the front? Yeah, let's just do the let's do the front. Can I? Front Wait, actually, can I buy things? Shop. No, it looks like I can only buy clothing and modifications, so I can personalize, but I cannot. I can personalize, but I cannot fucking upgrade. So whenever you upgrade, I probably upgrade. Yeah, I should have a full set of all the nozzles except soup for this. All extensions. But this, like, again, talking about how this this is supposed to be, like, a, t a town near a volcano, which I think this is the first time we get mentioned. I just got the text from, like, the owners of the house talking about their uh, their son, who's a volcanologist. Uh, that, like, yeah, occasionally, if you had an active volcano nearby, you would just get this kind of, like, ash and shit on everything. Stucco. Yeah, I think so. Once again, you would you you would absolutely put something to cover your windows for this. There's, there's other technology to get your windows clean. Well, I mean, if you use a if you lose a you use a low PSI one, you can. That's true. But you got you got to be careful. Yeah, I believe when this game was in early access, that was actually a mechanic that if you used like too tight of a spread, you would crack window panes and have to, like, go to the van and replace them. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but they decided to cut it because it just kind of takes you out of the vibes, man. It still blows my mind that Square Enix, Square Enix publishes this game. Yeah. And this game. And I has love all the little collabs you can get. Yes. Like, no. <laughs> Both free and paid DLC. There's a FF7 uh, DLC. Warhammer 40k DLC. Yeah, that just came I out. I think there's uh, Back to the Future DLC. Yep. Uh, there's a fucking SpongeBob DLC pack. Uh, there's Where's obviously, like, uh, yeah, I think there's a Ghostbusters one. That's got some iconic stuff for you to, to work on. But, you yeah, know, uh, and this, technically this game is still getting support. Like I said, that, that 40k, uh, DLC, like, just came out, I think, this year. Things people still playing. And that apparently counted for the whole last door. Done the driveway here. Wait, is this part of the driveway? It is.
All right, that's the drive done. Oh, I guess I'll get started here on the garage half then. Oh god, I could see Torvo just doing the fucking water. <laughs> Trying to eat it. Yeah. All those funny ones. When do we wash off Bahamut? I mean, there's some... there with Between, like, um, you know, location models and stuff, there's... Uh, th there's some, some iconic they... Final Fantasy, like, you know, stuff they could do. Uh, I think they would do probably a Magitech Reaper. Like, I think it'd probably be a Garlemald, uh, collab. Yeah. There's a lot, because there's a lot of that stuff, so we'd probably do, like, the Magitech Reaper. Oh, my God, and the person who'd be texting you would be fucking, uh, it'd either be, it'd probably be, um, Nero. Yes, that would be great. <laughs> I want, I want Eroskeva texts <laughs> complaining about how insufferable Sid is. <laughs> He, he makes you wash off the ultimate weapon at the, you know, after they've dug it up. Oh my god. Actually, no, that makes perfect fucking sense. Ultimate weapon, a Magitech Reaper, maybe an Iron Giant. Yep, those guys are pretty, pretty iconic. Uh... There's a new mechanic. Ladders. Because this building is dirty literally top to bottom. Front gutter clean. Ideally, if you want a power washer vest, you always work from top to bottom. But yes, that's another thing we don't have to worry about. Because uh, hey, guys, water flows downhill, and so does all the crap in the water when you power wash off. But again, we're just here for vibes, man. Well, my vibe has kicked me out, so I gotta change vibes here. Let us re-enable it. There we go. Join it. Oh. Back at it. I have been put back into default. Excuse you. My colors are purple and black. There we go. There we go. Bricks clean.
also chant. And normally in Power Wash, you do not have uh, magical dirt vision. Not really, no. A admittedly, uh, in real life, if you can't see the dirt anymore, that's clean enough. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, Listen, it's we are things. perfectionists. My professionals. Heroes, even. Yeah, I think it's only for, like, some of the very last jobs when you have, like, the highest power washer that I actually found the, like, white nozzle to be that useful. I usually am on the red or the... not the red, the uh, yellow or the green. Yeah. The red's a little too narrow. Yellow and green are the sweet spots. Uh, and sometimes if it's really in there, you gotta bust out the turbo. The turbo... Obviously, you know, like I said, I, I put 120-something hours in this game and, you know, rolled credits, so I have some intuition. But if you're following along, chat, uh, there's a reason why you have your different, like, length of extensions. Because that uh, physically extends your range. But also, uh, how close your water spray is to a surface affects how clean you can make it. Pressure, baby. But I do also like there's, like, a minimum range. Like, if I get physically too close to use my extendo, my long, my long boy, then it's like, well, you can't wash that anymore. Up and down, up and down. Up and down, up and down. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Ah. Uh, I'm making where you at. I'm on the, oh, the other side, yeah. Then I'm gonna start working on the roof then. Go for it. I think the ladder should still be up there. <laughs> I'm I'm too ninja, I can't use a regular ass ladder. Okay. The jumping puzzle. Let's start with the chimney. to the company for giving me the most fucking grippy boots there ever was. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. We'll, we'll, we'll be doing some wild shit. Um, there, there's some cleaning jobs in this where technically I'm pretty sure we should be wearing a safety harness. I mean, hell, honestly, even a one-story roof probably should, should, should have a backup rig for that, but, you know, I've in my real life, I've, you know, cleaned and done uh, you know, stuff on roofs without extra safety. Even though you're supposed to do it. Uh, but I was also usually, uh, you know, freeballing for family. I am not a professional roofman with roofing work guidelines. Roofing's actually very dangerous, by the way. If you ever engage in any roof-based activities, be careful. Be done. Right, yep, and I got whichever direction of wall this is. Oh, the window left now. Oops, are done. It's 
time for the back walls. The back of the bungalow. Bungalow back. The back alone. The back. Trim. You just not call it the trim. It's something board. I can't remember. It's not baseboard. It's something else, though. No, I think baseboards in, are inside. Yeah, baseboards are inside. But there is a specific term for these little fucking things that go underneath the fucking the roof here on the edges. I can't remember what they are. I'll just say my life, though. Oh, yes. There is definitely an architectural term for that that I cannot remember right now. I don't think it's the transverse, it's something else. But it might be a T word. It's separate from trim. If I had my roommate, he would know, but I couldn't fucking, I don't want to fucking bug him right now over it. He's like, hey, what are these called again? It might be trim board, I don't know. Alrighty. Let's work on this part now. Oh man, I'm gonna add that to my fucking um I'm I've started coming up with a second singularity war character. Not because I'm sick of Claymore, just because I enjoy this setting so much, I want to make multiple characters for it. It's a fun time. We like it a lot. It is a fun time. Yeah. Hell, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't like, stated there or anything, but if I was ever to play, <laughs> I have a character concept in mind. Yeah, no, my second character concept is a, um, as a, uh, young, down-on-his-luck, uh, adult who, you know, um, basically does several jobs. Uh, one of them was gonna be like courier services, but now that I'm like someone said parkour crane ninja, I'm like, oh yes, I should totally be have him like work also in like in like a fucking like um shitty cleaning service, you know, fucking you know low wages, super fucking dangerous, but you know they don't necessarily ask questions, <laughs> just you yeah. know cleaning fucking windows on fucking corp on corporate buildings. And there perfect. Hey, and I mean, you know, I when I built the the spray device, there's a lot of funny stuff made of in. Oh yeah, no. Well, that's one of the things he was gonna carry was a spray device with like a cleaner and all that stuff. He was gonna be he was gonna be one of those kids who was like really into like urbex and does like urbex like urbex sports at night. You know, does races and shit. Like I have this whole thing. I haven't statted them up or anything, but it's just one of those things. Like I have a concept in mind. So I was a uh, one. Of those, I was asking uh, um, Omega earlier about um, Urbex Sports and um, you know AR and AR games. Came up with a fun concept of like fucking you know um, AR paintballing and like in like fucking arena shooters and stuff using AR interface. Sounds rad. Completely extra as fuck, but you know it's the cyberpunk future. And I definitely yeah. know there would be kids that they had AR goggles. Some of them would like find an area, set up an AR game in there, and would not give a fuck about like who owned it and just fucking play. Yep. And I mean, and at times I've straight up talked about quote unquote blood sports because that's a thing that like, fu funnily enough, I I do not think our real life is materializing towards. But during like the '70s and '80s, you know, the foundational eras of cyberpunk, and even into the '90s. That was a big theme in, like, movies and books and stuff, was, like, oh, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're trending towards a more, more violent, bloodthirsty society. Uh, eventually, we're gonna have, you know, people get killed on live studio television. Um, don't, don't think we're heading that direction. Uh, no, we're, we're still, quote, too, quote, unquote, civilized to do that in public. Yeah. I mean, there's still such thing as, like, underground fighting rings, but they're, like, super fucking niche, yeah. and I don't think any people really die in them. 
I mean, I like Mar I, do, I do think that some of our media has gotten a lot more intense because we can pull off a lot more visceral shit. I still remember the raid, y'all. Great movie, great film. Uh, but like, the raid is good. Yeah, it's it's but uh, choreo wise, it's it's a great movie. The actual plot is nothing. It's an excuse no. for you to, to to watch dudes get the shit kicked out of them for like two hours. Yeah. I mean but, that's the point. Yeah. Uh, but like, certainly we've we've evolved our like level of violence there. But yeah, no, like you're not gonna see whoever the fuck was in Running Man. Like we're not gonna do American Gladiators, but you die. You know, um, even though they're making a real life Squid Game, like we're, uh, I'm pretty sure nobody's actually going to perish. My fucking nose the wrong way. There we go. But obviously uh. because you know. Uh, Singularity War is definitely inspired by some of those retro formats. Uh, there probably would be some of that. Yeah, it's just not going to be, you know, televised on public TV, you know, spawned by a coronet. It's going to be run by some fucking crime lord somewhere. Yeah. Anything that is venturing on the, like, clean corporatized is usually with the idea of, like, well, yes, it's dangerous, but you're probably not going to die because cybernetics exist. You'll be all right. I don't actually, like, I don't know, I don't necessarily know what what sports chrome ball uh, resembles. I'm gonna guess it's probably like a like a football or rugby adjacent because I feel like that would be the sport that would probably overall benefit the most from cyberization. It has to be it has to be it would have to be a, some sort of contact. It would definitely have to be something contact. Heavy. Yeah, because like like American football, you've got running, throwing, kicking, physical contact, you know, like, it's got all the stuff that would work for that. So I assume that's what Chrome Ball is. But also, you like, you know, talking about, like, sports that people like, like, uh, you know, baseball has to be uh, huge in Pacifica for obvious reasons. Uh, I don't know if that's, like, is there, there Cyber Baseball? Blurns Ball? I personally think there is probably something called a Chrome League. Yeah. And then, then you know, they have their they have their normal league, and then they have a special Chrome League for people who are augmented. And the rules there are a bit different. Yeah. Not also, too different, but... Str probably you know. straight up being different equipment, just because, like, if you're hucking, you know, cybernetic-assisted fastballs, um, I don't know if, like, a normal, a normal, you know, wooden bat is going to hold up. May need some specially padded balls. Need some, uh, you know, aluminum alloy bats. On the plus side, you probably get to make a lot of home runs and other funny stuff. So, people love it. I mean, you know, like like with everything with change, there's going to be people out there being like, well, back in my day, there wasn't any of this. There was no power fist assisted catching and throwing. Uh, but people are going to be like, yo, holy shit, did you see that last night in the Chrome League? That guy pitched a 120-mile-an-hour fastball. Actually, you say blood sports probably aren't a thing, but I'm pretty sure in sports like bo I'm pretty sure sports like boxing have probably made a resurgence, but they have like chrome boxing or something. Yeah, which I think is I've probably talked a lot about more shock boxing like, and like mixed yeah, martial arts. Those are definitely like a thing, which are probably very violent. Um, but also, very that's because I fucking love Megalobox. Great series. Oh, very good. Uh, the the uh, Exo Gear weapon is very explicitly in my mind based on Megalobox. Yeah. But yeah, so like, there's definitely a lot of that, and I admit some of this is my own like personal bias. But I like excuses for people to carry swords around because it's funny, <laughs> and also like, once again, uh, it's like the eclipse phase excuse. Like, once you get past a certain a certain tech level, like, I've been doing you know stat blocks for adversaries pretty regularly uh, throughout the week, even though I've been feeling a little down. And I haven't been doing as much like hardcore writing, but doing some stat block stuff. Like, the default like layout for like you know cops and stuff in this in this game like a regular ass beat cop is like wearing a plus one soak uniform he's got like four sets of snap cuffs um carrying you know a special uh i borrowed this from the, the shadows and the beat song stat block but i like it uh a special like smart pistol which can uh change its uh like qualities on the fly before you make an attack so you can choose like pierce two blast four or stun damage so what like is some that's some fucking enforcer shit. Yeah, it's a, it's some some judge dread ass shit which I love. Um but it's definitely like yeah, no, like that perfectly fits the mold of like cops are are overworked and over overfunded. 
but but uh, not not well paid and well trained. But boy, do they have a lot of toys. So like, they probably don't care if you carry a sword or a knife on you. What are you gonna do with that? It's a knife. You're not gonna stop a, a a gun that I can set to be blast four whenever I feel like it. You know. I'm just waiting for that moment where a cop just notices Claymore's fucking breach to fucking heavy seeker rifle and just be like, okay. Uh, that would definitely I feel like is like. Mm, that's a that's a call to dispatch. I'm not paid enough for this shit myself. <laughs> but like, the idea of like swordsmanship, like professional dueling, coming back because it's very flashy. It doesn't have to be like super bloody. You know, you can do it a touch or first blood. Uh, but it looks cool and is very stylish. Listen, I think a lot of societal um, concerns can be solved if we can just fucking duel people over it. Not kill oh. them, just you like, just beat them up. It's like I was right. Oh, yes, uh, that's definitely is a thing I mentioned, because that sounds like part of the dystopian future is, oh, yeah, trial by combat's back. <laughs> but also that's, a, you know, a great hook for player characters, because you can be like, the job can be like, hey, does one of you know how to fucking sword fight? Because uh, I've been challenged by some guy, and he's going to kick my ass. He's got a fancy name. He's, like, super German. Uh, probably he wears all black. Tons of this. Tons of Sword and gauntlet. Well, and with thermic blades that is actually set up, there is you know duelist gauntlet and thermic blade because uh, superheated superheated swords are cool, but also very dangerous. Don't try this at home, kids. Oh, I get all those steps. Got some of that undergirding. Let's do that. There you go. There's the porch steps. Door. Oh, oh yeah, no, you are right, Law. If someone hits that home run, but someone's with the fucking the tendons or something, just makes the boing jump, catches it anyway. Ugh. Yeah, I know. And like I said, that's that's the shit people want to see. Like, there are going to be purists who are going to be like, hey, that's not the sport anymore. And there probably are still markets for that just because, like, making everybody chrome is really expensive. And also, I do not think we're going to be yet at the levels of fucked up that, like, Cyberpunk 2077 is, where, like, there's that whole fucking side gig at Phantom Liberty where you investigate the sports academy where, like, nine-year-olds are being chromed up to do, like, place, you know, soccer uh, in, like, Europe and something, and it's just like, man, that sucks. That's real fucked up. Well, again, Singularity War, we're... We kind of cyber, we're kind of cyberpunk dystopia, but not fully cyberpunk dystopia. People are doing bad shit, but not like super fucked up shit yet. It, it, yeah, it's kind of like it's not quite what people would call post cyberpunk because like you're not, you guys aren't cops, you don't work for the government and try and like pick stuff up. But we're we're you know twenty years of restabilizing after all the cyberpunk bullshit that you know collapsed world governments and you had the food riots and the resource wars and all the other stuff that like are always in capital letters in cyberpunk <laughs> stories um you know we're we're about you know 20-ish years after that so like things have stabilized people are still doing bad shit but it's all in the level of like well if you do too much bad shit then everybody's going to turn against you and then you're going to be fucked and that's no good for you either like yeah. governments can't go crazy out of the line because if they really do some fucked up stuff that means that like other governments will be like hey i see you're doing something really fucked up uh now we're gonna gang up on you we don't like you anymore same with all the corpse same even with criminals and freelancers it's like there's there's equilibrium nature abhors a vacuum oh my hands. almost done with this back wall almost done with the roof yeah we're about 98 percent all the way done Only going for about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Two people. Many hands make light work, as they say. Also, something about idle hands, the devil's plaything. There we go. One more roof done. Ah. Uh. Oh, okay. First of all, I haven't quite got all this gutter drain. Let's do that. Uh, let me check this guy over here. That guy looks fine. Come over here. That looks fine too. Check that. That looks fine. 
Actually, what am I doing? I'll just pull up this. Let's see here. We got porch fences, two gutters, three posts, two window frames. Oh boy, I wonder which window frames it is. And a door frame, it looks like. I'm go real short for these fences because there's not a great place to get back here. Oh, I see the door frame. We got the door frame, we got the porch, porch post. Oh. Gotta get this these these cranny looks like grannies. I see why this post of me. It's on this side. From the inside the porch. You can see. Right, that, that post. Let's see. Ah yes, the underside of this. Porch fence, porch post, posts. No, I think I see one window frames. This, yeah. It's the underside of that one a little. Oh, what? No. Yeah, you got it. Okay. All right. Gutter. Two gutters, two posts, one oh, window wait. frame. Is it this window frame? No, that window frame's good. Can get back on the roof? Yeah, I do. This is one of the posts, but where is the actual, like, dirt on this post? Up oh, when here's the window frame. And the blast! Ah, I see. Okay. I got the post. Ah, that's why it's underneath the fucking win the window. There we go. Got it. Boom. Low. Get lower. Uh, post, 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 post. Not that post. Not that post. Ah, yes. Okay. It's this gutter. Not that post. Not that post. All right. That's porch the post. Gutter. Oh, it's this post. I can see it from fucking here. Ah, I got it. That there we go. Good. Uh, this one over here, it looks like. Ah, let's do a little bit of a top-down view. Ah, yeah. Take too much. There we go. Booyah! Job complete. Time lapse. Sadly, only let's from go. one angle. Whoop. Yeah. All right. Now the ground. The park uh, warden who calls us Dirt Finder. Which is technically true. I do have that superpower. Right. Dibs on the Stegosaurus! Let's go! Yeah! Yeah, the playground's pretty fun. Look at this boy! It's so dirty. Let's see, 20 Don't worry, stars. I got you, fam. Is that enough to buy the new... Yes, okay. You can buy the medium-duty power washer, but can't get any of the... Attachments for it. Do we want to start on this one, or do we want to do? Let's let's do this in an orderly way. We'll we'll. Do some big sweeps. As always, I am excited to go play more Singular War. Got stuff to do, things to think, jobs to take care of. Yep. Pick on a few fronts. Well, I did realize something I did need to ask Joy that, you know, probably would have actually, you know, made more sense. Because uh, Joy talk, talks about how, you know, she wants to find her, you know, her found family. And I'm like, who are your found family? Tell me about them. Give me some idea of what they look like so I can, you know search so it's kind of weird a little weird you gotta find them and it's just one of those things like uh, i'm kind of waiting i know it's like it's like it's one of those things like um oh, what's the word i want to use oh it's called the stego slide 
Like, I don't like the hurry up and wait mentality. I'd like to get as many plates spending as I can. Yeah. If I can put, like, some people I'm searching for, like, people who look like uh, Joy's, uh, or Joy's, uh, paladins. Good. But other than that, no, it's time to do an opening night and then go hit some rustlers for some loot! That's gonna be great! This will not go wrong in any way whatsoever. Sure, it'll go wrong in a normal way. What is that with your mom? Many people will uh, expose and die. Yeah? Probably. Listen, I am excited to fucking, you know, fight a Mad Max encampment. That's the only way I can think of it. Well, yeah, that's what it is. It's also kind of like that one mission in the, the Saints Row reboot, but it won't be a LARP. You'll be actually killing people. <laughs> that's right, I forgot about that. I know this is weird, but I think people took the Saints, Bo Saints Row reboot way too seriously. Yeah, that is, I think, kind of what it is. I mean, obviously, I think there was some of the usual, like, culture war bullshit that, that allowed people on the internet seem to get in with everything, but that wasn't the full extent of it. I, I think it is, just like you said. People like, people are like, oh my god, cringe. You know, like, oh, this dialogue, it's so bad. I mean, like, yeah, some of the lines are corny. Um, you have options in that regard. You don't have to pick those those voice choices if you want, but uh, Saints Row has always had really weird voice acting choices. Uh, there's a voice in oh, is it three or four? One of the voice packs is is you're just you're just Ryan Reynolds. Like I think they just got Ryan Reynolds in to do a voice line, and he just that's your character is also just the boss is just Ryan Reynolds, like. <laughs> Uh, or there's the fact that I think in s multiple games you could have the zombie voice pack and just all of your voice lines are just brains, right? And I'm like, yeah, no, like people I think took the dialogue and stuff a little too seriously, and like the game's fine. It was it was buggy. They they polished it out. They had some concepts. Uh, oh no, Aaron, it's um it's the grand opening first, then the rustlers, because I do like I said I don't want that dangling over in my head while I'm out in the fucking canyons. Um, shooting up dudes. Yeah, we'll do that one first. I said I would prepare for both just in case, you know, one of them goes super fast. But, yeah. What do I think I have most of my tools I need for rustlers other than occasionally, like, whipping up a few things. Maybe think about some, some vehicle specs. You guys could actually get into some, like, car chases and vehicle shootouts. Oh, that'd be great. Someone can finally sit in my fucking gunner sheet and shoot people. Yeah, I've got that damn thing for a reason. Well, yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Is like, you know, you you guys have been been prepped. You know, you've had rides. I think uh, the only person who doesn't straight up own a vehicle is uh, Wolf. Yep. I don't know if Wolf is much of a car much of a car dude. Uh, no, I think he would probably much prefer to parkour everywhere. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably much faster than for him than obeying traffic laws. Oh, actually, uh, that reminds me. I saw that on rollers that some of them could get up to highway fucking speeds. Like, could you actually use them for a fucking chase? Oh, probably, yeah. I might say that you're, like, only, like, speed one or so, but, you know, you could you could count as a vehicle for terms of speed. They're supposed to be fast. Uh, yeah. I like to wear my inspirations on my sleeve. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, skateboarding and stuff in, uh, uh, what should we call it, uh, in Snow Crash. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, I don't know, I just really like inline skates, man. Uh, and I mean, I thought it was, I thought really it was air gear, honestly. Yeah, I really like, uh, that's another one. Uh, air gear is kind of a weird genre, but it does get kind of cyber-y at, at points. Some yeah, weird shit in there. Um, and like, I've never been like super deep into it, but I understand that Jet Set Radio exists. You know, so like, yeah, no, totally. You could probably do that for for if you really want to do some high speed chase, because I think rollers are cool and people don't. You know, I I don't I don't I shouldn't say that people don't don't consider that enough, but I, I don't know if anybody else in the group has really looked at them. But you know, they're. I mean, they're I funny. would use them, but I am a nine foot. Not, I wouldn't say nine. I am a non Euclidean robot man. I am not supposed to go fast. I am supposed to be slow and inexorable. 
I mean, you also you your mobility option is you literally built jump jets into yourself. Yes. Well, that's for that's for, like it's for the same reason that Claymore has stealth. Claymore doesn't have stealth, so he can sneak by things. He has stealth, so he can sneak up to things and kill them. It's a very deliberate choice. I don't have jump jets, to, you know. I don't have jump jets, so I can, you know, easily. Well, it is so I can easily access previously inexable areas. It's so I can jump at motherfuckers and pounce on them with the fury of a falling god. Yeah. And eventually, you'll, you know, you, you'll, you'll get. Uh... Falling Dragon. Yeah, I was just saying. Which one is it? It's fall yeah, Falling Dragon's the Falling. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> I should probably reread Air Gear just because it's been so long. It has been a long while. I kind of got to pick my, my, my poisons. I've been really meaning to catch up on Dungeon Meishi le lately, but also, like I said, I've been feeling kind of, like super groggy and tired this weekend, so it's like, man, I cannot read subtitles right now. Oh, that makes me so upset. The Blue Archive anime is out, but it's not, it hasn't, wasn't picked up by any, um... Oh, that's right. I, I, I think I saw some people in anime manga talking about it. It's on Hulu, isn't it? I don't know if it's on Hulu, but it's like, it's something weird that I do not have ac easy access to. I gotta double check. Yeah, that's a shame. I have actually been, been watching animes on my Hulu, but uh, that's because... Uh, I assume it's when uh, Disney bought up Fox, but that is apparently the place to go if you want to watch uh, s old seasons of Digimon. That makes sense. Uh, and I've actually, because uh, the dub is what's available, that's how I watch it. I've been rewatching watching uh, Digimon Tamers currently. Yeah, Tamers. Yeah, that's Tamers is a wild series. Big, big fan of Tamers, because um, I like... That one, it had an awkward history of the dub and syndication. Like, I think they, like, switched to, like, like off Fox to, like, Disney Channel, like, halfway through, because, like, it was run through Saban anyway. Um, like, the first couple Digimon seasons were through, uh, like, Fox Kids. I remember that's where they aired. I did not watch those. Uh, Tamers did, like, a network switch, and I, like, dropped some episodes. But I saw, like, most of the front half and uh, most of the back half. And, like, I was able to watch all of it on, like reruns and syndication on like ABC Family and stuff. So like I remember I was I was the the prime age for that. I was in the like 10 to 12 slot. So not not young enough to be freaked out by the fact that like Tamers go some dark places. There's some spooky shit in there. But yeah, I have very very fond memories of uh Tamers. I am a gallant mon Andy. Also it's so funny to listen to the dub these days because Fucking Steve Bloom is both Gilmon, which is hilarious because he's just doing a little gremlin voice. Meh. The Katoban, I want bread. Uh, but also, he's like the the initial human antagonist, uh, Tamaki, the like men in black guy doing just his, Hi, I'm Steve Bloom. This is my Steve Bloom voice. And it's just like, it's so funny to me these days, especially when they're in, they happen to end up in the same scene. It's just like, this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well, Loth, guess what? This is why I was asking about, like, Cyber Sleuth. I was like, well, which, which Digimon game was that again? Because, like, I'm, I I would say I'm, I've am i never been diehard for Digimon. Like, I've definitely had my diehard Pokemon phase. I've, you know, I'm, I'm a, a, a returning Yu-Gi-Oh! enthusiast. Digimon was always kind of hit or miss for me, because, like, I... I'd, like I said, I never watched a lot of the, like, first two seasons, two, first two series, which is, like, that seems to be Digimon's equivalent of, like, you know, Gen 1 or, or like, old-school Yu-Gi-Oh!ers. I learned recently, because I was checking out what other series there are, that they straight-up remade Digimon Adventure, the original season. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'll probably watch that just to see what it's like, but also, like, man, damn, that is a, that's a nostalgia deep cut. We just, fuck it, we just remade the series you like. No, Digimon is surprisingly popular. Yeah, it's, it's not like popular power. It's not like it's not like um, Yu-Gi-Oh uh, Yu or um, Pokemon, but you know, it, it, it stays in people's minds. They keep coming out with movies and uh, and stuff. Yeah, I I think Digimon succeeds because they do a thing that I think is very healthy for that style of an of of multimedia franchise, where like it for the most part. 
while they have like multiverse shit, so everything is kind of in its own is canon. It's all its own separate continuities, so you don't have to worry about it. You know, like mm-hmm. like obviously the first two series were like se- you know direct sequel, but like Tamers, they were just like nah. In this universe, uh, Digimon is like fictional. There's a card game and video games and stuff, and that other you know an anime, and that's not the same thing. And then the next series, Frontier. It's like, all right, whole new continuity. Everything's, you know, different. Different rules, all that stuff. And and so that that kind of, like... On the one hand, that means you got to worry about, like, audience retention because there are going to be kids who are going to be like, hey, these aren't those characters I liked, even though their story is done. Where'd those people I like go? But also, like, lets you reset the viewership every generation... Because, like, Pokemon kind of does that with the games, but as far as I know, anyway, the anime is still fucking eternal 10 year old, uh, <laughs> you know, Lich Ash Ketchum, still <laughs> journeying with that same Pikachu who has to be level 120 by now. Um, and somehow, you know, still doesn't have enough battle experience to just kill everyone. And, like, so, like, Pokemon is a very different, like, retention of stuff. It's funny. I, I, I got back on this Digimon kit because I did some, uh... Oh, well, two people are like, uh, no, Ash is no longer the MC. Oh, did they finally do the Switch? Thank God. That kid needs some rest. We need to let him, like, grow up and go through puberty and stuff. Pick which of his, you know, honeys in every region he should settle down with. Misty. I mean, you know, you gotta go with the classics. Yeah. Miss also just sidebar. Misty is a fucking iconic character design. Uh, TV Trope still calls that idea of that anime character the short tank, as in shorts and tank top, because that was like Misty's iconic look that everybody remembers. Of just like the spunky girl sidekick. Man, I remember... <laughs> Sorry, like, Loth phrased it so funnily. Ash became the world champion and then turned to dust. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I think... I, if I remember fucking correctly, like, that was, like, such a moment in, like, Pokemon. I remember this. Fucking ESPN fucking uh, congratulated Ash on that shit. Well, it's because, like, like if if <laughs> the actual, like, continuity of Pokemon was Ash did what you do in, in the games, like, every region was Ash racking up another, like, regional or world championship... Uh, which is kind of like what the character equivalent of him in the games does, like Red and Blue are just, like, constantly racking up world championships, you know, and always being the super secret final boss. But, like, mm-hmm. my boy Ash needed a win. Uh, I watched Pokemon anime up through the Gen 3 season, I think, and he still didn't, never won shit. Always came up runner-up or something. Yeah. You know, always jobbed out at the last minute to keep that tension going. Um, and it's like, my boy needed a win. He's been doing this a long time. But no, it's good that they, they went the, the, the victory route and let him actually get out of there. Because, like, I, I think that actually for, in general, for Pokemon, resetting your continuity, taking your time with developing your, your region and letting your new characters shine, especially because if the anime adaptations are going to draw on the actual characters in the games, like... Some people will have things to say about Hop from a Sword and Shield, but otherwise, in general, I think that's something that Pokemon games have been doing very well in in more recent gens is characterization of your supporting cast. Like, obviously, your protagonist is, like, literally just your self-insert. You can fucking dress him up however you want and stuff, but your supporting cast is getting really good. Like, Scarlet and Violet has a really strong supporting cast between, you know... uh, Nimona, you're one of your major rivals who's, like, whole deal is she literally resets herself back to zero, even though she's already a Pokemon champion quality, like, trainer. She grabs the other starter uh, just so that she can go through this same level-up journey with you again because she thinks you're really cool and strong and she wants to battle you. Yeah. Nimona's like- the, the, the Goku of, of Pokemon rivals. Um, but there's there's other characters in that like uh, Penny the the girl who's who's you know working through some stuff like that she's she's the the shy girl with the Eevee backpack who's got some secrets um, and Arvin who's all about like the ancient mysteries he wants to gather herbal remedies to heal his 
a boss diff who's been super injured fighting a legendary Pokemon. And, like, you know, there's all kinds of these, like, strong character stuff going on. Uh, and it's like, yeah, that's that's much better for anime development. But, yeah, I think Digimon's had a strong, strong case there. But I got back on this kick because I watched some old... Uh, videos that were like talking about the Digimon card game. The current Digimon trading card game actually seems really neat. They have very strong like thematics with like their color system and stuff. It's just uh, I cannot afford a, pa uh, a paper hobby right now and there's no good simulator Sag, which is weird because like Digimon's run through uh, the Bandai uh, you know, Megalith Like honestly, funnily enough, I think Digimon has been in like like the card game has been out like maybe like as long as fucking Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. Like... I believe it's it, gone through a couple iterations is the, yeah. the main thing. But yeah, they've, they've released trading cards for at least as long as the others, but it definitely didn't catch on over here until this, like, latest version. But they got some pedigree, but it seems really interesting and I like the theming, but, um, like I said, there's no digital simulator and I cannot uh, afford a pen and paper hobby, and... <sighs> I mean, I probably could get a group going among... You know, I could find some nerds to, to do TTS with, but uh, I don't know. I feel like I got other stuff to do. So I'm like, I'm just like, shit, did you want stream it anywhere? Oh, it's on Hulu? Well, I pay for this shit anyway. Let's get in there. I mean, you can't steal Penny's look, guys. You know, you can't cheat. Some characters have to be unique. It's like the gym leader Iono and her, uh, you know, live Magnemite hair, de hair, hair decks, you know? You can't, you can't ape that style. That's her thing. She's also a Twitch streamer, so that's, you know, fucking brand identity. <laughs> God. Sorry, I know it was a couple weeks ago, but I'm just thinking about fucking the Twitch thing of I had to change their fucking rules again, and like, no, you cannot stream on your butt. Yeah, the fucking green screen meta. It's so, it's so weird. I mean, like, I don't know. I'm, I understand there's that there's an art in like being, uh, horny within the boundaries of also not yet being quite not safe for work. But also like, y'all, the internet is for porn. For now, anyway, until uh, laws uh, take all that away. But uh, we'll probably won't last very long because uh, your politicians are also looking at porn on the internet. But uh. Like, I remember when, when that was the, the classic gag. Well, the internet is for porn, you know. You can you can just be horny on the internet, people. You don't, you don't okay. have to watch watch a Twitch streamer, you know, green screen her butt. It's a cool gimmick. I respect the fucking hustle, but, like, I oh, also yeah. don't understand how these are so popular because you could just do it in your own time. Get a two-monitor setup. You can have porn on one screen. You can look at pictures of butts forever and also play video games. I do sometimes. Listen, I'm not. I'll be. I'll be straight with you. Sometimes when Lucky's quiet in his stream or something, it's because I'm looking at porn. Like Lucky gives no fucks. I mean, I check Twitter and I follow some people. On, I don't retweet it, but I follow some people on Twitter who are very horny. Yes, it's the same. it happens. I guess I'm just, I decided I'm working on the main playground gym now. I guess I just drifted over there naturally, so now we're committed to the bit clean the, the roundabout toy, and now we've got to clean the monkey bars and stuff. But yeah, I remember no, when like I the, the, did this the, one. This one actually took me a while, because there's a lot of little crevices. Yeah, this is one that's good to two-man. This is only 50 bucks more than the bungalow, but it's way more complex, because, like, all this big pad has to be cleaned. Oh, there's a fucking... Is this dirty? Yes, this fucking trash can right where we started is dirty. How did this trash can get this dirty? What have you children been doing? But, yeah, it takes a while because it's very complicated because you've got a lot of space. It's fun. All right, well, the stego, the, stego, the stego slide and pad is done over there. Woo, soccer! Yeah, you can push the soccer ball. I remember if there's a trophy for thinking about it. Yeah, well, speaking of like all those like those like childhood things, yeah, I, I definitely could not. I, even if I like, I even though I am interested in things like Digimon, Pokemon, and um, and Yu-Gi-Oh, it's just one of those things of like I know I don't have the time, and I also don't have the patience. Lucky doesn't like. 
I don't mind losing once in a while, but I know I know people like this is this is evident from um, can lucky guess uh, you know lucky guesses. I mean, like, I understand how people play this game. People play these games to be the most absolute assholes they can because they want to win and they want to win quickly. You see, I I'm a person I like I'm not as bad as Law because I know Law. Law will just do things because it's funny. But I like to do things because I think they are like, you know, neat or like I like themes or I like trying to pull off certain things. Not necessarily so I can win super fast, but just because I want to do something fucking cool. Lucky likes the rule of cool. I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah, there's a in like Magic the Gathering Game 3, there's a name for that type of player and I don't remember it. But you'll you'll find those archetypes everywhere. The problem is that like... The other ar- one of the other archetypes of player is win at all cost in the fastest way possible. Yeah. Like I, you know, I admit I, I'm probably not the most efficient player. Though I've certainly, you know, we did our own progression series for a while before just scheduling uh, fucked us. But I, in like 80ish weeks of that, I learned a lot about how to be better at Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I was still like the number two lowest rated player in our squad. Um, Loth was our lowest. The Suck Boys were here. Uh, but yeah, it, I don't think I'm a perfect player. And there are times when I do not have the patience. But I I do have the ability to just be like, fuck it, go next, you know? Um, and I think that may be, like, to go way back to our uh, roguelike conversation, that may be why I tolerate some roguelikes a little better than you. I don't know if I really super enjoy them, like, I'm not drawn to them, but I've played a, a decent number and can get more into them, like, you know, gone through, like, basically beat, you know, Hades, got some other stuff going. Like, I'm, there are times when I don't feel like I'm, well, I probably usually do still feel like I'm losing, but I don't feel super cut up about the just, ah, fuck it, go next kind of philosophy. And that is something that, like, happens a lot with card games. Like, I would, you know, as, as a hypothetical, I would love to run, like, a, a you know, just because I'm sure the people would tune into it because they sure vote for it a lot when I was doing, uh, you know, bonus stream picks. Um, we may or may not eventually get back to that one chat, but I, I, I don't know. I kind of am, am off doing, like, weird one-offs unless we've got something special to do, like, you know, the... Uh, seven demos or, or spoiler cast or something, but people would always pick Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. I wouldn't mind doing a run of, like, you know, you, you do not play Yu-Gi-Oh! You, you know you know some of the rules from back in the day. I've explained a few rules later for, like, you know, Lucky Guesses stuff, but, like, I I would, would not mind having you take a run at Master Duel because, you know, it's a free download. Um, you know, try out some of the starter decks, you know, uh, play the tutorials and the solo modes, but also, I'm like, I don't, you know, I, I would, we would lose Lucky the moment we go to ladder. Um, <laughs> you know, you would even in, because I've, I've been through many seasons of, of Master Duel, um, and I've, you know, stopped playing Master Duel long enough to get kicked all the way back down to Rookie. Um, and I have still seen people playing Rookie with, like, the most meta cutting edge decks. And I'm just like, bro, what the fuck are you doing in Rookie? Usually, if I'm that low ranked and I see somebody with a tryhard deck, I will literally just scoop and be like, "Buddy, go to your free rank up. Get out of here, man." <laughs> if I'm playing in low level ranks, I am usually playing dumb bullshit. Um, chat to give you a perspective right now. What I'm currently like slowly grinding away at because I want to do want to play good newer decks as they keep announcing support and stuff. Uh, and you gotta you gotta play games to grind gems. But uh, I'm playing fucking Cosmo Grenmaju, you know, which is a Technically, yes, that, that is a top-cut deck uh, from the recent competitive, you know, YCS season. But there's very specific circumstances. I find it hilarious, but it's not super good. I find it very fun. But I'm, you know, been once again kicked back down to silver, so what the fuck do I care, you know? Yeah, Actually, no, I was like, I wouldn't mind like, trying it, but, you know, Lucky's going to try and build a fucking Dragon Maid deck and not live or die by it. Hey, I mean, I will say, uh, Dragon Maids is a a structure deck, so, like, you can uh, spend gems to buy three copies of that and get, like, all your core. You don't necessarily have to rip random packs, but it'd be a funny experiment. That's, like, one of those things of, like, yeah, no, I, like, I want to play these cards because I like them, and I think they're cool. Not necessarily because they're going to win me matches. I would like them to win me matches because, um... 
I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this, people. Uh, no, uh, no one who plays these game, no one who plays these games is like act. Um, when they say that they uh, they don't care about losing, they lie. They are, they are fucking lying to you. They they really do care. Because if they do, if they didn't care about losing, they wouldn't care about winning either, and then they wouldn't be playing this fucking game. Um, a, a, a much healthier aspect is, you know, you care about winning or losing, but you do so in a way that's like, you try not to have, be sore about it either way, you know? Like, yeah. Because there, there have been times where, like, in Prague, we have done some fucking stupid-ass shit, and I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm like, all right, good game, everybody. That was fun, even no matter who won or lost. And then there are oh, other yeah, times no. where, like, the other guy will go, oh, good game, Omega, and I'm like, no, I'm... No, no disrespect to you. That was not a good game. I was fucking bricked up, and I misplayed, and I sucked ass. That's my bad. It's like it's like anytime we do like front lines. There's like those days where we like we get absolutely blasted, and everyone hates it. But then there's other times when we still lose, but it was a close match. It could have been anyone's game, and everyone's like, "Oh man, that was some good shit." Yeah, you know, it's it's like that kind of it's that, it's that kind of feeling, and that's the reason why I kind of avoid things because I think I get more of the feeling where I just get absolutely smashed because I may not know what the, I do not have the fucking perfect deck for things instead of having that, you know, that actual good competitive feeling. I like, I like, I guess that's the word. I like, I like competition. I don't like just getting my ass beat, you know? Yeah, and that's like, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game where you will, you know, you got a 40 card deck, 15 card extra. You will perfectly craft that deck. You will, you know, hand hand craft every single card, select them perfectly. All my ratios are perfect. I know exactly what my strats and my plays are. I I have done it and lost in chat. He has done it. Um, there you will you will you know be like, there's no way this deck can brick. There's no no way I can I can have no plays turn one. You will find a way to draw exactly the five cards, because that's your opening hand, and there's no mulligan rule in Yu-Gi-Oh. You will draw the exact five cards that say, hey, you've already lost the game, bud. These cards don't do anything. If your opponent also doesn't brick, you're fucked. You can't do shit. And it's like, yeah, that's, I mean, and you know, like I said, I, my approach to losing is generally like, hey, you know, we're all just fucking online. It's a simulator. I'll, I'll hit surrender and go next, you know? But there are times, you know, when I when I get, get in deep and, and, and lose it. Yeah, off camera and on camera loft. We we talked about this a lot in our prog series. Off camera loft, he's a menace. Like we have made decisions about the meta of our prog series absolutely based purely on the fact that off camera loft was fucking destroying us. On camera <laughs> loft, ah, I uh, have done nothing. I'm losing. You know, it's it's all about like consistency and stuff. Like I said, there's there's a decent amount of single player content technically in Master Duel. They they have the the thing called the solo modes where you like uh you know play through storylines of different card archetypes and do uh themed decks. And you can also play your own deck as you like get a lot of you know resources and cosmetics. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just remembering when you were streaming one of the fucking Yu-Gi-Oh games and you just had to fuck my deck. <laughs> Yeah. No, I had to. I had to handcraft a deck just to just to get over it. I was like, I'm getting fucking clean. I gotta make a deck specifically to counterplay this shit. Uh, Th those de those duels are fucking hard. The the I think I don't remember what they call them. The, like SP duels. They've done like two series of these where your op opponents are based on like the major anime decks, but they're not actually the cards they used in the anime. They are all full of like modern legacy support from like a couple of years ago, and you will get absolutely fucking cooked. The my deck especially was like just fucking zipping. Um, I also that was a later second set of those, but they did the Cyber Dragon deck where I got fucking obliterated over and over because Cyber Dragon is one of those uh, local legend type decks I've talked about where like it's not really good, but it's like Blue Eyes where it's a it's an OTK deck. So if you let them you know go second and you don't have the right counterplay, they'll just make a big guy who does a shitload What's of damage OTK? and you die. One turn kill. Sorry. One turn kill. Okay. Yeah. You know, you, you do all 8,000 life points of damage in one single turn, and it's over. Uh, luckily, I don't think any of the solo mode decks you have to worry about what we call the FTK, the first turn kill. The true, uh, literally, you go first and you can defeat your opponent before they can even get a turn to go. Uh, there are a few of those in Yu-Gi-Oh! I've talked about them some in the Lucky Guesses series. They're not super common, 
Um, I think there are a couple that are going to be consistent in the upcoming meta. Uh, but usually the ban list will get them. The ban list is super frustrating in Master Duel because, like, I feel like Konami's strategy is just... Is this an ultra rare, which means that if we uh, we banned it completely, you would get, like, a shitload of crafting card crafting dust back? Well, then we can't ban it. Even though, you know, every, every brand new meta deck comes with, like, uh, you know, four or five ultras, all of which cost 30 dust to make uh, one copy of, and you usually need three. But I guess they're concerned about the economy. But yeah, it's it's a wild time. Like I said, it's it's just an idea I've had a few times because, like I said, they don't always turn out. We've got you know we've got a decent number of views. We got a pretty high chat rate. We got a few back and forth on concurrent views. We've like peaked and valleyed. People are into this, and certainly you guys are chatting up a storm tonight. Like I said, while we're just power washing and chilling. Uh, but it in general, I think the audience uh, seems to like you know uh, occasionally a bit of the suffering. Uh, I don't really like oh, to yeah. do suffering streams. Because, like I said, I I do not think it's very flattering to me when I get, you know, really pissed off at Baby Rage of video games. I understand that that's not a good look for me, and I don't like being pissed off like that. But usually a little bit of yelling and screaming entertains the people. But, you know, I, I generally I like to watch, you know, streams and VODs of people who are having fun. Usually. Uh, it's like why you're never going to catch us dead doing games like uh, fucking Get Over It, you know, Bennett Foddy's Get Over It, or there's apparently a new, very similar game called uh, a very difficult game about climbing, which is like getting over it, but you're free climbing with two hands, you know? And I'm just like, nah, fam, you are not going to catch us streaming those games. I'm sure we'd get views for a little bit, but it probably wouldn't stay constant because it's just us getting mad and getting clowned on, you know? Yeah, we're pseudo-podcasting right now. We're vibing. We're talking about stuff. And we're cleaning. Well, like I said, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, just do Power Wash, because, like, I can just engage Lizard Brain and clean and use, like, the other part of my brain to just talk about stuff. Yeah, this is a this is the type of multitasking I think I'm good at, is, like, uh, I've talked about this before. Um, and it's been confusing for some people, but, but accepted by others. Like, the way my brain works is, like, I've got, you know, language zone, which is for listening and talking, and then I've got, you know, moving zone. I can listen or talk and do video games. Like, I can move controllers and move my hands. Sometimes there's some, some failed overlap, but, like, with this, where it's just literally I just move the sticks around, I push some buttons, I swap some stuff, I make dirt go away. Uh, very easy to sit and talk to. Oh, yeah. Actually, hang on. Give me one second. I gotta go turn off. It's starting to get dark. Ugh, done and done. Just go ahead and get also, time for a coke break. Hope everyone heard that. It did carry over on Discord, so it should have gone through on the stream. Sick. But no, like again, this is why I was excited because I do enjoy, I do enjoy Power Wash similar as a, hey, I'm just gonna you know, good time. There's no, there's no like pressing needs or concerns you can't really fail at anything you just keep spraying just keep spraying yeah. and you'll get there eventually so what you do so this is the, so this is a game that i feel very much is about the journey not the destination though the later like i said the later levels of this game are pretty wild but definitely yeah it's, it's about the process you know getting yeah. there doing all the stuff um and yeah, I remember like I remember watching like some of those old Markiplier vids when he went first went through while this game was still in development because it took him a while to get at all the levels and stuff. Um, but like I remember a lot of people were like, "Oh, is there like a hidden thing? Is there like dark lore in this game? Is there like s that?" I don't know which game perpetuated that. Like if that, I don't think it was Five Nights because Five Nights has always been a horror game. But like, was it? Does 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 the Viscero Cleanup Duty have like some dark lore or something? I mean, Viscera Cleanup Judy is just very messy. I don't actually think there's any, like, actual horror elements to it. Okay. Oh, I just got kicked. Oh, it's been a while. Eh, a little bit. Let me return on co-op. Very weird that it just decides to turn off. Oh, wait, take me a second. It does it. Not Hang on, on one second. Right yeah. right. Co-op on. Let me see if I can successfully shoot an invite. Let's do a little bit of loading. 
but yeah, like I don't know what video game was responsible for it. Chat might remember, you know, which stuff's in their in their brain, but there definitely was some game. Oh, just give me tell me something went wrong. Let's try that. I invite again. Um though so co-op I have flicked the co-op switch on, so you should also be able to join on your end. Nope, nope, never mind. It turned off again. Hold on. Confirm. I may just hold on manually. Alright, let me see here. I think I let's me there we go. Ugh. Oh, excuse me. I manually reset my physical cable. Oh. It wasn't actually dropping, but let's see if it, that worked. I tried to join and it failed. Uh, it's probably because I was uh, doing a quick disconnect, reconnect. Oh, okay. Mm, very well it then. says you're joined. Very well then. So you should be coming back in. Let's see if that works. But yeah, like, I don't know what video game, like, prompted off that trend, but, like, there is definitely a thing where, like, when, when games that are pretty simple like this are coming out, people will, like, look for, like, oh, where's the secret, you know, deep lore with a capital L, or when does this game, you know, turn into a horror game? Um, and certainly there's some stuff going on here, but it never really does that switch. Uh, it's just, like, relaxing, and, like, that's the point. You know, the point is you're just here to clean. Yeah! Oh. Right, almost back in. See, so, yeah, I know it's 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 great for this kind of like relaxing stuff. And like I said, it's very oh. it's very dynamic. Like I said, you're gonna see some wild stuff, chat. If we're gonna gonna be dedicated to doing the whole career, which I see no reason not to. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. All right, he's back. I mean, you've been working on this fucking this fucking this fucking yeah. rubber top. Listen, there's a lot of rubber top to work on. I'm just mentally debating whether or not I want to keep doing the floor or want to go back to this you know jungle gym type thing. You know, there's probably some game through like Five Nights at Freddy. Like there are like a few games I think like stay in that like that lore space. Yeah. Like Undertale, I think is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, Undertale is definitely one of those games where it just sounds very simple, but then can get very dark. Yeah. If you want to make me, I have never done a genocide run, and I will never do a genocide run. You cannot make me. I will withstand whatever torture I need to do. You will not make me do it. Yeah, Undertale is one of those weird, like, moment in time games. Like, fucking. Sans Undertale, which is itself part of a meme, like, that's such a. a, a vibe, right? Of just, like, hey, do you remember Sans? And then, of course, you know, Megalovania is, like, a whole thing. Listen, most of the Undertale soundtrack is pretty fucking baller. Oh, it's a banger. Um, I'm actually, like,. I don't. I'm not keen on enjoying it in its episodic format, but I, uh, I'm very interested in like Delta Rune whenever that's all done, because that's in a very, very similar vibe space, but doing different things. But also, uh, great work with the music. But yeah, like Five Nights is definitely like the, the you know uh, now retired Matt Pat Game Theory TM Game Theory game, like that. That is one of the most iconic of that type. Because it was full of, like, little weird tidbits. The bite of 87 and stuff. And then the very slow ramp up. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that I think is still... Still unexplained. Well, I don't actually know why the animatronics are fucking malevolent ghosts. Now, that was a pause word there, by the way. Not a verb of fucking. <laughs> that hasn't stopped some people. Oh, no. I should actually watch that gag video sometime. There's uh, another YouTube channel. I'll plug them because um, I know that they're kind of... Uh, they're bigger than us, obviously, but they're still maybe a little smaller, and they got some vibes, and they could use some views on certain series. Um, and I want you to watch their uh, Naruto recap podcast, Save.io. But uh, Save Data, uh, very interesting uh, for them. Uh, they did a lot. Of, got their start, I think, got popular doing a lot of uh, music analysis videos for Zelda music. Like, they got a lot of major Ocarina of Time themes up there. If you've ever seen any of those, those are really good. But um, they have a gag video I think they did as, like, a, a, a Patreon or donation goal uh, one month that was um, a Five Nights at Freddy lore, but what if everybody has huge butts? <laughs> what? Uh, I think it was, like, a gag on one of their other streams where somebody actually said FNAS instead of FNAF. I've never actually watched it because I 
chat. I don't really care about Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm sorry. It's a jump scare game. Once again, I told you. I'm not I'm not here to get my, my, my decal freakled. Uh, I have anxiety in real life. I do not like video game anxiety. I I can't play Alien Isolation, despite the fact that that's a game that I think is super cool and great. Uh, because the moment... Uh, oh, what did... I think, I'm trying to remember, Markiplier had a funny name for the Xenomorph when he did his own playthrough of it, but whenever that Xenomorph shows up, whenever he's out there, no, nah, can't handle it. Don't, fucking the heartbeat noises, the motion tracker, the fucking scare chords, nah, man, not for me. That means, I mean, we should probably play that one day. I'll just take the fucking controls. I think I'm a little better at that kind of stuff than you are. Yeah, I think you're, you're, and I could definitely, I can definitely ride shotgun, but it's like, if, when I, I, because I, I do like that game, and I've played it far enough for actually the Xenomorph to show up. It's just like I said, it's just like, when I get in those anxiety zones, it's just like, alright, heart rate go up, breathing get tired, and I'm just like, woo, I need to take a fucking break from this. We're getting we're getting antsy. This motherfucker's out here to kill me. But yeah, um, it's a great game, but like, Five Nights at Freddy's is just trying to jump scare you and like, how good your reflexes are, and I'm just like, nah, man. But like, it... It was a big, like, watershed moment in, like, game lore stuff. And I like some some stuff that's come out, like, there's... I probably wouldn't play a lot of them, but, like, some of these, like, back rooms vibes. Um, we've, we may have missed the boat on Lethal Company, mostly because you know, we're, we're worrying about our, our money levels. But that, that game actually seems kind of funny and neat. Because, like, it can be a jump scare simulator, but also it can be a your friends do something dumb simulator. There's a new one of those out that I've seen people. The one that people have, like, emoticon faces on? What is it? Yeah, about? uh, I think it's called, it's like literally v- called Content Warning. Yes, it is. I think it's, like, a VR game, but I've been seeing that trending about. Yeah. Um, I gotta say, like, um, especially for something else that I might talk about in a second, but, um, that's my new, like, not that I don't have 5 million homebrew projects to go through, but I feel like that's my new tabletop RPG niche, is I'm like, man, somebody should make a tabletop RPG in the, like, backrooms lethal company kind of genre of, uh, of like, your point is to go to dangerous places, get, get resources so you can come back and do more. Uh, but also there are, you know, eldritch creatures from beyond time and space waiting for you. Because, uh, like... You know, there's Delta Green and there's Call of Cthulhu, but those are, like, very classical. Like, in Delta Green, you do this because, uh, well, it's your fucking job, and otherwise you will go to prison. So, like, Delta Green means red market, but maybe a little bit, like, of a goof on it? or Yeah, I would definitely like some dark humor in there. Y'all know I love my dark humor. Love me my gallows humor. But, like, just, like, trying to capture that kind of essence of, like, hey, there's some weird shit we've got to explore and find out about. Guess what? The things you find out are really fucked up and going to eat you. Please collect some samples. Smile. Smile emoticon. Oh, that shit. Your hand, there should always be some sort of AI that talks very positively, but will just absolutely send you to your death. Yeah. Like, there, there's a, li- a little bit like the classic RPG paranoia. Um, that's more about, like, like sociopolitical commentary and, like, spy thriller genre, but definitely something where, like, oh, yes, your your friend computer will send you out to retrieve some, some mission resources. You need these. Um, but, like, just, like, that seems like it's a very popular game genre. I'm just like, yeah, that's good. That, that, that seems like a funny niche that I could work with. Because I, I like the concepts of, like, backroom stuff and liminal spaces. And, like, visually, like, aesthetically, I should say, what, what, um, games like Lethal Company are doing. I mean, I will say, I think you probably had your most fun in Delta Green designing that fucking mall. Yes, the I spent a lot of effort and we got a lot of sessions out of it, but it was a very rewarding time to like uh, check it out. Uh, what was it? I'm trying to remember. It was it was Star Something Mall was what I called the the scenario. But it's it's the big long Delta Green stuff, and I still got future ideas for Delta Green in there. But it's at the same time it's like I I feel like we haven't quite been in that kind of, like, cosmic horror mood in a little bit, so I have not yet gone back and finished out some of my ideas, but it's a different vibe I'm going for. I definitely, I definitely get a kick, like, whether it's Delta Green or Eclipse Phase out of the classic, like, haunted house type scenario. That's actually, uh, I think that was technically the first uh, game I ever ran of Tabletop was I ran a uh, version of The Haunting, the very classic Call of Cthulhu module. For, uh, for Ron and Marth. 
and just like I I'm I'm big into those kinds of like, you know, house of horrors type shit where just like, yeah, this is this some weird shit here. Also just give you some opportunities to do funny shit on your own. Uh, I've I've tried to re-listen. I haven't gotten all the way through because it's because uh, Operation Starcourt is is very long. But like some of my my greater memories of that is just like when you guys rolled up to the I don't remember what the smoke shop was called off the top of my head, but I remember that it had that fucking hookah smoking <laughs> frog statue outside, Bong Sagwa, and just like that sent you guys for a good fifteen twenty <laughs> minutes. Oh no! What sent me is when we came back, and I was like, "Bug Saga, where's my fucking drugs?" And Bug Saga actually spoke back. I was like, "Ooh!" Yeah, you came back at night, and I was like, "Oh well, it's time to fucking lay some shit on these guys." Like, <laughs> welcome. Guess what? You're in the weird. The mall is weird now. Bug Saga was real, and he's fucking smoking his hookah and talks to you, man. Oh, that sent me so much. No, uh -huh. and sometimes there was freaky shit. Like when you guys got attacked by the animatronic mascots in the uh, not Chuck E. Cheese. You know, that that was definitely like a moment where you guys were a little a little rattled. We're like, are the people just minding their own business outside? I'm like, yeah, that's not right, man. We got to get out of here. <laughs> we got to get out of here. No, that was a that was a uh, a good time. Probably too long, too much content, but we had fun. No, I, I enjoyed I I thought it was the High Noon Mall. Yeah, that was the name of the mall was, was High Noon. It was, uh, yeah. Opstar Court was the, the operation title. No, I enjoyed it. The fucking, the fucking, the, 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 the what was it? What the, the Debbies? Yep. Deputy Debbie. Found out, yeah, found out that one of our missing agents was one of them. Oh, God, no. It was good. I liked it. I remember the first time I think you went in there with, like, your, I got to do my favorite aside. Like, you you had your sanity cracked, and I was just, like, I described everything to everybody, and then I, I turned to you, and it's like, hey, remember all that stuff I said? That's not what you see. You see something completely different. Deputy Debbie looks fake as shit. <laughs> yeah. No, like, 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 I, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, I, like all our operations, Star Court is probably my favorite. It was definitely just... one I put the most effort and passion into, and I was just like, I was literally listening to fucking, uh, you know, mall soft vaporwave yeah, mall music soft. and shit. You know, like I, I was vibing writing that. That's what, and that was around the time that we came, that they came out with the 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 initial AI image generation things. Yeah. So we would we would you would just type in you know abandoned malls and stuff or creepy malls and you just get back some weird shit. And we're like yeah that time. Yeah, I just fed uh, back in the doll e meme days. Back when it was all just a joke, you know, I I fed uh, you know doll e just some weird prompts. I think I remember one of the ones I showed up at some point in our secret tabletop cabal was I just asked Dolly, like, hey, give me, like, nine slices of images on uh, Cthulhu soda. And it gave me some good ones of just, like, Cthulhu as a Coke bottle. And I'm just like, yep, no, we're vibing. And like I said, I'm Chicken bucket. Like, yeah, the chicken bucket classic. That I fucking asked you guys for, for Singularity where I'm like, hey, are you guys okay with chicken bucket coming back? And you're like, yes. <laughs> As long as Dallas doesn't put another one on his head, I'll be good. I would like to see what circumstances would make Dallas's current Singularity War character want to put a, a fucking chicken bucket on her head. That that yeah. would be very out of character. I think. Honestly, Professor Mormo, I don't know if it was in character or not, but like... Mormo, much like your character, has already experienced one psychological break, so like, he he's always been a little off. Just in different ways. Oh, what was my character name? Kara something. Kara. Yeah, it was Kara something. I like her. I like her because she's like she's kind of she's kind of lovely. She's like I want knowledge. Yeah, and this is something I appreciate about you as a player. What he is, uh, you are absolutely the guy who is not not like usually to like that. Oh, but it's what my character would do way, but like. When you got a character and you've got a thing in the story, you are full send it. You are like, fuck it, this is the character. I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh, I can't think of it. Oh, well, no, I guess no. I guess it would claim where it is kind of obvious sometimes. It's, no, I'm about to do some bad things. I am a bad person. And Kari is definitely a, like, no, I don't trust. I don't trust our. I don't trust our agency. I don't trust you guys. I have paranoia because I have seen things that no man should see. Remember that no. time? Actually, which one of the characters was on the phone when that the the conspiracy nerd got 
fucking ate by a thing from Beyond the Stars. What if he was uh, on the phone with him? I don't remember. I remember, like, I remember we we got his body and went and fucking buried it in the fucking woods. No, you dumped him in a lake, actually. Oh, we dumped him in a lake. Yeah, you you bundled him up in a tarp and threw him in a lake in a national park. You guys were a little uncomfortable with that one, but yeah, he, you were on the phone as I like described the growing static, and then this guy just like you just got to hear him die horribly in a way that no person should die because that thing was literally from a different dimension. Work on this. Oh, hold on. A little smudge on this slide. Let's get the top of it. It's gonna bother me otherwise. This, by the way, is uh, Power Wash Simulator is the ultimate. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. It bothers me a lot. And that one's still green. I had to finish the quote. All right, there's the slide. Good. No longer bothered. But yeah, no. Like I said, I have a lot of fun running Delta Green and kind of doing my own thing because I have my own, like, personal opinions about, like, what's more entertaining for, like, cosmic horror and Cthulhu Mythos stuff. Like, I... And I think why I slowed down on some of those is I do a lot of research into, like, what has already written and what people have established, and then I usually am, like, take half of that, and then I'm like, throw that out. Yeet. Yeetus the leetus. But, yeah, I, I have a lot of fun writing them, but it is very intensive, because I will, I will go in the research hole and just fucking vibe. And I haven't... I don't know if it's because, like, the media and I've been consuming and stuff, but I have not, like quite gotten in the deep dark hole like I still want to do I have a, a, a you know desert themed adventure that's uh, honestly yeah. I, I think I can safely say like would would have some elements of some some very classic like pulp stories like I've I've mentioned before about you do like, some of the mummy let's go oh I should go straight <laughs> up do the mummy because I love the mummy no I was thinking more <laughs> of like a wombo combo of like journey to the center of the earth and a little bit of um I remember you mentioning journey to the center of the earth yeah, yeah. um which again, love that, love that story. Uh, but also, like a little bit of like Lost World slash Jurassic Park stuff. Yep. Uh, also, honestly, probably taking elements, especially from uh, the uh, you know horrible B movie knockoff of Jurassic Park, Carnosaur. Which I'm sure if Dallas was here, he'd be very excited to hear. But like, like I said, I still have I still have all that idea like laid out, and I'm like, I think I got most of the way halfway done through that scenario. I just didn't finish the follow up part. Um, Nah, we probably you we probably got on uh, Gen Sakai at that point. Yes, you guys are very intense on Gen Sakai. That's another one that like Gen Sakai is like I feel I feel like that's fully locked in of like nah, I'm not gonna lose my vibes on Gen Sakai. We're we're no, I, that, like Axe keeps like expressing concern. I'm like no nah, man, I know exactly what I'm doing in Gen Sakai. Whenever we go back there, I'll be fucking dialed in. Yeah, but <laughs> I know I know Axe is like Axe is anxious about it because I think he feels like he it took him a long time to really crack like, Leona as a character, mm -hmm. and, like, we left off, uh, not as soon as I think some of you were thinking, because I still have other stuff going on in the desert, but, um... Oh, yeah, I know, we still got, like, two more things in, uh, but the city to take definitely, care Definitely, like, pre-planning, like, um, like, your, your overall threads to, like, wrap around and, like, do a lot of heavy lifting with, lifting with Leona's subplot, so, like, I know that's why he's eager to get back in there, but, yeah, no, Jensekai is absolutely something... Like, technically, something that I'd have to, like, go back into the mines and do my work on would be um, uh, our, our, you know, uh, rain stuff. Mm. Yeah, no, I know Aaron has been uh, Jones in further rain a bit, and I'm, I'm kind of with him. Like, I am excited to get some rare, but again, that's, like, you know, starting a whole nother, you know... Yeah, a whole nother thing. Uh, a whole nother thing, and I know, like, you, while you've done, like, we've done the groundwork on it, and you've started that, you haven't, like, put on, um, a lot of time into it. Yeah, because, like I said, you guys got, we decided to take a break and, and go back to the, the, the sprawl, but then that was definitely, like, man, we really feel the limitations of the sprawl. Let's, <laughs> uh, Omega was a, a, a dumbass and really liked this world building we all did collectively, and so he committed to doing a full Genesis hack of that as well, because we also really like Genesis. Uh, which is, you know, the, the homebrew hole I'm in. We do have player collision, so let's, let's figure out our spacing. But yeah, no, like, I like, because I do, I do like one roll in. Like I said, we played, like, I got into this group playing a Wild Talent with yeah. the, the, you, and, you and the boys previously, so yes. I have very fond memories. I do like the system. Yeah. 
Like I have discovered that I do like systems. Where, I do like systems where dice are variable. It is just not pass or fail. It is, um, you know, various states. Yeah. That, that's why you know, like, that's why I honestly feel like I can't play like most roll twenty systems like these like games. Like, it's like you pass or you fail. I'm like, uh. Yeah, okay. I I feel like because I I've I've played a little of five five ed. I like that 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 crew that group. Um, and I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind like getting into like trying out like Pathfinder Second Ed or even getting back to to Five E because I think Five E has its limitations, but they also have a lot of cool stuff. Um, but absolutely, that's a game where I feel like either as a player or as a GM, I would want like not like the players to necessarily like coordinate their concepts, but like we ne- we need a fucking healer, we need like a DPS guy, like because you want to make sure that people are not not like optimizing. Because, you know, I think a lot of the fun in D&D is just all the dumb options you can do. But definitely, like, Mm -hmm. I would like everybody to, you know, know what their fucking, what niche they're going for is and be a little coordinated and and make sure you're good at something. Because, like, I had fun playing that game. There are also absolutely times where we get into fights and just, oh, well, the D20s are rolling like, are rolling like shit. So we're, uh, we're all out of juice. So we're just getting our ass beat. And then, you know, there were other times where, like, well, I'm the paladin, so I'm, D- I'm you know, technically one of our DPSs, so I'm just fucking, uh, you know, critting every other role and just pumping out damage with smites, and, uh, you know, the GM is looking at me sadly as, as we're obliterating guys who were supposed to take, you know, like, 20 more minutes. As the GM, I, boy, I know that feel. Ah, yes, you appear to have exploded this man. But yeah, it's I can totally see why some people are not are would be reticent to play it because that D twenty does have that problem of just like okay one roll oh they pass their saving throw uh, nothing happens you're fucked that was your whole turn and also that was your spell slot probably or some other resource you only have limited access to um, and also honestly like the fucking long rest short rest economy like it, it's part of D anD D you can make it work it's so weird and like has definitely had problems in systems where it's been like, okay, we did two fights, we're fucking... Well, be, like, be glad we have that system. Remember, I started playing D&D back in 3rd edition. You didn't have long wrist or short rates. You have Wizards had what we call the 15-minute workday. Yeah, no, where it's just like, it was... It was I mean, technically you had what would become long rest, but it was much more loosey-goosey of like, well, just you have to wait until the next day and like take a full eight hours of sleep. You know, kind of a thing, um, but yeah, no, like just like I, I, I remember the jokes about the 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 you know, uh, fifteen minute work day. You do one encounter, you blow through all your spell slots. Well, I'm done for the day. <laughs> and like, yeah, no, that's really weird for pacing, y'all. It really is. That's why, I like, you know, that's why, I like, it's like it's not that I do this like fantasy games, but like I need I need systems where you know spell casting is more flexible. Or uses, like, different resources. Spell slots, I hate them. Yeah, slots are weird, and it's weird that, like... Because they're from, originally, like, the concept of spell slots is supposed to be what they call Vancey and Magic from the uh, fantasy and science fiction author Jack Vance. Um, it, it's an interesting mechanic. I think there's a reason why I think primarily only D&D and D&D-adjacent games actually do that. You know? Like, other people are like... No, nah, fucking uh, other resources are better. Like, you know, uh, I, I like how for Genesis, for instance, they tied it in very perfectly into the strain system. Yep. After you cast a spell, you always take, uh, unless, you know, you've got other special stuff going on, but you almost always take two irreducible strain, and that's just that's just your budget. You know, when you run out of strain, you run out of spells. Also, you pass out. <laughs> you are out of the, out of the encounter. Um, but also there's a lot of ways to get strained back. You can take, you know, the equivalent of, like, a short rest. If you just, you know, knock off for a few hours and, and, you know, take a breather, you can get most of your strain back. You can roll to recover strain after every structured encounter, you know? Take a breather. It's part of the process. Um, and it's something I miss. I'm, chat should know this, but I'm a 4th edition D&D apologist. Um, I got to play a little bit of that. Dallas offered to run some of that for us because he also really likes that edition, but he is fucking busy. I think he's still technically working, like, two jobs because he's doing, like, teaching assistant stuff and also internship stuff. And he works with uh, with, with people's, you know, brains and uh, vulnerable emotional states. He's busy. Yep. Technically, I think... I, just, I, 
hopefully Dallas doesn't mind me commenting on this because he's told us and it's technically I think been on recording, but uh, he technically, you know, works with children and young people as well, works with minors. Yeah, but he it's has a whole to sign like non like shit. He has to sign uh, non disclosure agreements. Yeah, and like, you know, people's fucking medical privacy and stuff. So like I'm totally understand that he that did not materialize for him. But like I think fourth edition was was too early for its time. The concept of a universally mathematically balanced D&D where strictly speaking every class has access to the same type of resource in the form of uh you know uh what they called um at will powers encounter powers and daily powers so like encounter powers you can only do once per encounter daily powers you can only do once per day and then you know at will powers you can do all the time and everybody is kind of balanced around that access um yeah and yeah, what they no, do like, is I'm, different, you know, like... You know, uh, I've never played 4th Ed, so it's, like, always been one of those weird things. But I have come around it because, like, part of the... Um, I didn't mean to cut you off, but no, I'm going to finish. But part of the reason why I was always a little leery of... Um, a little leery of 4th Ed is because 4th Ed doesn't necessarily let you do, like, ridiculously crazy broken things and, you know, certain classes... No classes necessarily get to super outshine other classes. Everyone's like I said, is kind of balanced. But I didn't realize until later. It was like, no, that's actually kind of what you want. What you want? If you don't, if if you have like unbalanced characters, you have an unbalanced game. Yeah. And D and D is fucking stupid about that. The shit that you can pull off in three point oh and three point five, utterly ridiculous. Yeah, I I never got to experience it myself because I played very little 3.5 and very little Pathfinder, but I remember the stories about what people called COD, Cleric, or Druid, Zilla, because just, like, there was so much shit you could do with the spell lists for Clerics or Druids that you could just do anything. You could literally be any class and also still be a Cleric or a Druid. Yeah. And, like, and Fourth does a thing that I think is, again, uh, a lot of people at the time, which is a wild criticism to me, like, but were like, oh, it's like a video game, and I'm like, why is that bad? That's good. Video games are good, actually. They're cool. But people were like, no, I don't want my pen and paper to be like a video game. But, like, they explicitly call out what they called roles. So, like, they were explicitly like, oh, yeah, fighters, paladins, those guys are defenders. They're tanks. Uh, And they had abilities to tank. Like, they weren't all the same, but they mechanically had the ability to, like, mark enemies, challenge enemies and stuff like that so that they would be incentivized to hit you and not others, you know? Um... Mm -hmm you had what they called strikers, so that was, like, your DPS. Hey, your job is to do a lot of damage, usually to a single target. Uh, Wizards were, like, controllers. They were good at AoE stuff. And then you had leaders, which were uh, healers and buffs. Also, 4th Ed had one of the greatest leader archetypes ever, which is so sad that it got lost. Uh, Dallas also really likes them as a fellow 4th edition head. Uh, The warlord, the marshal, uh, so just, you uh, you know, pure physical ability, but they were the leader. Um, so there, they, they had a heal called Inspiring Word. They just yelled at you to be less dead. <laughs> uh, but also, they had a lot of battlefield utility. Like, a lot of their powers were, like, you basically do a charge, you move an um, X number of squares from an attack, and also pick another character. They get to move X number of squares and attack that same guy kind of a shit. Oh, that's so great. Like, when we got, when we got real deep in the tactics, and also, like I said, it was a, it was a fucking grid-based game, so, like, Y'all know that appeals to me, chat. Um, I wouldn't want to have had to have lot like buy minis in real life, but in the era of digital tabletops, that shit's great for me. Um, but like, there was a lot of good work there, and I think it was ahead of its time because these days, if you marketed your your tabletop game as like, no, no, all of our classes are are balanced around each other, but have different you know flavors for like what different stuff they do. You know, different classes were from different sources, basically. Uh, like, you know, uh, your bard was arcane leader, you know, warlord was martial leader, cleric was divine leader kind of a thing. So you had all that stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I think they, they killed too many darlings. They, like, rejiggered alignment. So it was just, like, lawful good, good, unaligned, which was just, like, any of your, like, you're not cosmically aligned, evil, chaotic evil. Which, yes, technically, like, less options, but also, like, Align- the nine axis alignment kind of sucks anyway. Like, there's a lot of memes about it, but it's also not great philosophically. There's a lot of a lot of weird rigi- rigidity in it as well. Uh, but they also like loosened up alignment restrictions. Like, paladins didn't have to be lawful good; they just had to be within like one alignment step of their deity. 
which I think they did kind of keep in 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 fifth. Um, but it's still like that caused a lot of grief. People were like, "Well, powders aren't lawful good all the time. What are they?" I don't know. Hypothetical person, I'm giving a stupid voice who hates D and D fourth edition. Maybe they're not being lawful stupid because I also remember all the fucking you know internet horror stories of paladins who were like no guys I have to be lawful good you can't steal that you can't kill that guy you know the the what we call it lawful stupid right yeah like and I think you know 4th edition wanted to get away from a lot of that but people objected and so 5th edition uh, went back to their bases in a lot of ways and they do have some creative ideas but they were definitely there's a reason why, like, the original player's handbook, like, subclasses and classes are, like, almost all of them have additional options to fix the fact that they were undercooked or, like, people only play the extra subclasses that came out later, you know? Like, mm-hmm. they were a little undercooked. They were conservatively designed, and they didn't really stretch their legs, and, and people could see that from a game design perspective. They could do math and be like, hey, this, this class isn't as good as it could be. Um... And, like, I think, unfortunately, whenever they actually launch D&D Next, um, because they want it to hopefully be backwards compatible with all your 5th edition content, because they understand that uh, making you rebuy all your books is going to be an awkward proposition, even though they totally want you to rebuy all their books, um, they're not going to sufficiently kill their darlings, and you're just going to end up with D&D 5.5, and it's probably not going to be the coolest game it could be, because every time they release playtest documents... Uh, D&D Twitter and the D&D subreddit are in an uproar because they tried to do different things. Like, um, I, I, I remember, I think they, they tried to, like, unfuck druids for their D&D Next playtest, and people got up in arms because, like, as opposed to, uh, druid wild shape just being, uh, you look up a creature and send that stat block to your DM and hope they're okay with it, um, you had, like, templates... I do think that, like, they were a little narrow in the template design. Like, you couldn't turn into, like, a tiny creature until, like, 6th or 7th level, which was crazy. Like, I definitely know that there's a niche for druids to, like, turn into, like, a rat or a spider, right? And, like, stealth around, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But it sounds like what happened is that wizards basically just cut the template idea and just went back to wild sheep as it was because they were scared of their fan base. You know, well, their fan base is the them. one buying. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, but I, fe- I feel like it's one of those things where, like, they're almost too big for their britches, you know? Like, they're not going to make the kind of, like, different game design decisions that they need to. Because, like, I do think that 5th Ed was a return to basics because they were getting clowned on by Pathfinder a little, because Pathfinder is absolutely just 3.75. It is. That's... I don't... They only can't call it 3.75 because of trademark reasons, but... All the people who wrote the first edition of Pathfinder were guys who wrote third-party shit for 3.5, and with the way that, uh, you know, Wizards was going to change the gaming license, were, you know, going to lose their livelihood, so they just said, fuck it, we'll do it live. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, D&D 5th edition kind of, like, ate into their customer base back because it was a return to form, so they're producing a second edition of Pathfinder to, like, actually, like, address criticism and, like, build a better game so that they can, you know, have a market base again and improve on stuff. And Wizards absolutely shooting themselves in the foot with their attempts to roll back their their open gaming license again totally gave them an opportunity to do that. But it's it's very interesting because, like, I watch some of the big, like, D&D-themed, you know, podcasts. Like, I've watched some Critical Role in my time. Uh, Talk about content grind. Those motherfuckers, I know that they have a lot of money and talent. Um, because they're so popular, you know, but they also, like, show up once a week to record for, like, to live stream for, like, five fucking hours, you know, mm-hmm. of, of D&D. Not that I wouldn't, I, 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 I'm not ashamed to say it, not to say that I wouldn't literally kill to sit into that table. Are you kidding me? Fucking Matt Mercer <laughs> GMing, you know, Laura Bailey, Travis Willingham, Sam Regal, uh, Liam, and, and, you know, uh, Ashley Johnson, like, those guys are all fucking, they're great at their at their craft, you know? Like, that's great. They're having a fun time. We love it. Um, But, like, they've all known each other for a long time. They're just having fun and, and, you know, figuring out a good way to, like, up the show quality for it. Um, They play D&D because, like, 
uh, Wizards has given them a lot of integration. Um, but also, they're not afraid to say that they're working on other shit. They've, like, done original games. They've done, like, other other weird shit occasionally for one-shots. I remember they actually secured a, like, tie-in for Tears of the Kingdom where they did a uh, fucking Power by the Apocalypse hack for Legend of Zelda for, like, a one-shot. You know, like... Um, so they're not afraid to stretch their legs a little. Um, Dimension 20 is another really big show. Um, they seem kind of attached to the D&D 5th Ed framework, which works for some of their more fantasy-themed stuff. But they've also done some outliers where I would totally be like, no, dog, do not, you do not need to run D&D to do this fucking type of game, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think there are some people who are too attached to D&D. Uh, but yeah, like, it's, you know, talking about different games we want to play. Like, like I said, I wouldn't mind playing some more, like, D&D 5th Ed. You probably could not pay me money to GM 5th. <laughs> like, that is just, requires so much extra work and so much fiddling, because you, like, still got to come up with, like, fucking maps and stuff, and you got to figure out stat blocks, you know, um, and all that other stuff. And even when you know, you're running pre-planned stuff, you still have to fucking adjudicate on the fly because, you know, you absolutely know players are going to... Oh, bottom of the shelf's very dirty. Let's get that. Uh, you know players are going to do some weird shit. So, like, yeah, no, I'm... That is not a game that I'm, I'm like, ever wanting to run. And I think there's other fantasy alternatives to play as well. I, I will say that, like I said, um, I talked earlier about, like, my, my next big niggling after I write my own Urban Fantasy Heartbreaker and uh, finish writing for Explore, my game about uh, space survival that is just a genre that's near and dear to my heart. And, you know, Wait, what's the Urban Fantasy one? Uh, Shadow Wizard. Oh, Shadow Wizard, that's right. Yeah. The game that I literally designed in a dream. <laughs> I'm still not shitting you, like I said. I, I think I was, I was fucking feverish that night, and I just, like, w- went to sleep, and, like, my brain invented a... Uh, a, a, an outline for, for game mechanics while I was fucking chilling, and that was the outline that I turned into. I absolutely want to get back to that sometime, because we've had some funny ideas for our own urban fantasy takes. You know, cursed Jordans. Uh, you know, dr- dragons hoarding shoes instead of, you know, fucking gold and other shit like that. Uh, no, I love, I love, I love the idea of, um, modern fantasy. I know people say urban fantasy, but when I say modern fantasy, I mean like magic is just commonplace. Urban fantasy, you can still get, you can still get the fucking masquerade. Yeah. With you know, a la Dresden and uh, vampire and all the, all that white yep. wolf shit. All that white wolf shit. Oh, I don't shit. I should still. Not that we, I need to add to our backlog, but like. I need to double check in on the science second edition at some point. That's something that absolutely I could I could run for you guys and you guys would enjoy. Actually, yeah. I was thinking about your mage, your uh, mages. Uh, what was it? Twenty twenty four. Yeah. That's like, definitely that also... straight up modern fantasy, like you said. That's yeah. just magic is out there. Yeah. Brought up the chat. Honestly, that's like if we wanted to get back into that content, I probably could. I feel like Singularity War scratches a lot of the cyber itch on it. Yeah. Um, like, Mages of War, which is basically feature complete, was done, like, from a point of view of, like, hey, man, I really think, you know, magical World War stuff like Valkyria Chronicles and uh, Yudra Senki is, like, really cool. That's neat. That's a neat idea that people uh, do but don't do enough, and I want to do my own shit of that. And I think it found a very a very functional place uh, after lots of rigorous playtesting. No, I'm happy with it. Again, it kind of petered off like it usually does, but I I accomplished a lot of what I wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it petered out just because, and this was a turning point when we were playing it, of, like, and there is an AP out there somewhere where, like, we, like, talk about how we took, like, a five-minute break and had to hash some shit out. The reason why that petered out is because, honestly, like, I never had a long-term plan for it. I was just kind of, like, testing out my random tables to, like, get vibes And, like, ultimately, we did have to, like, take a moment and sit down and be like, okay, you guys do have some long-term goals. Let's, let's, like, hash those out and, like, let me spin my wheels on how that looks. Um, But ultimately, like, I think because, like, 
I didn't have an end state in mind for the campaign. It just kind of like ran out of gas naturally when like yeah. we we reached a climax and we're like, okay, are we chomping at the bit to do any more of this? I mean, we could, but we could also do something else, and we've been doing something else for you know fucking literally years. But it's a cool game system. But like one of the other, it's it's funny. Like one of the other ideas I would have had just because I'm I'm one of those people uh, would be like. Um, well, so yes, we're looking at chat. We're bouncing around. I'm, I'm pretty sure... I don't know if Lucky Straight Up mentioned uh, the, the 21st century version of Mages of War because you brought it up, Axe, yeah. but I, I, I felt like that was a, had the synergy. We're well, glancing back and forth the chat. We're also powerless. You know, I just brought that up because I remember the, you wrote the, 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 the fiction on it. I was like, oh, yeah. sick. Yes, that's another thing I'm very bad about is, is writing and finishing fiction. Yeah, also have some Singularity War fiction, too. Yeah. I mean, I've not been in a very... I mean, obviously, like, the past couple of weeks I've been fucking allergies and stomach bug and fucking whatever, but I've not been in a super deep fiction writing mood. I think it's because I've got other, like, back-end shit to work on still. You got, like, 800 adversaries to write, my dude. Yeah, it's true. We got a lot of that, and I, st <laughs> I still have fucking fluff to fill out. Like, there's a couple of things in, like, the front half of, like, factions and stuff, and I still want to write my section on, like, what districts in the city are like, but I've been kind of cooling on that and letting my hands rest a little uh funny enough uh not a lot of world building i have to do usually with adversary profiles i get to get my jokes in and like establish to people at home like what these adversaries are for but i i have been finding a lot of comfort in less is more type writing for those profiles i'm still laughing about the fucking hackers having snacks in their equipment i know you pulled that over from shadows of being stopped but it still sends me every time oh but I, yeah but i left it in because it's very funny <laughs> yeah uh, I did actually change up something a little, but I, like, uh, actually today, like, wrote, translocated the profile for, like, police detective. That had, like, pocket flask in it, and I'm like, okay, that's funny, that's cliche, I'm gonna write this as coffee and cigarettes in their inventory instead. Because I, I feel like that's much more on point and will resonate with my players. That yes, every poli uh, every hard boiled police detective comes with a armored coat and cigarettes and coffee. It's eternally it has that fucking styrofoam cup in hand. It's Pick always the wrong, hot. Picked the wrong day to stop sniffing glue. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, there's like I'm making like you write like a lot of stuff. Like I'm still like slowly chipping away. Like I have two ideas under my fucking. Um, my belt that I'm still working on, not as quickly as you are, because Jesus fucking Christ, you can write. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have the flow state. I can get in the zone. The problem is that when, thus, when I do not get in the zone is the work stops, but, you know, yeah. we can, uh, generally, I've, I've always been a home brewer, and I'm pretty good at just, like, like I said, getting in the, in the zone area, but, Yeah. I will say it's funny though, like talking about different systems. I got a little away from, but I did talk about you know, like with my where I think my future homebrew ideas are. Um, it's it's funny. Um, this this I think it was during the weekend, uh, but uh, X shared the like playtest version of Perfect Draw, the uh, card game anime simulating tabletop RPG, uh, Yarp. which uh, just finished crowdfunding, and so he has access to like the the playtest version, which is honestly fairly robust for a playtest. They, they really cut their work out on their, their you know, pre-release version. But it is, uh, you know, still pretty close to Powered by the Apocalypse. And it's it's funny because that is absolutely, without any prompting, what I would have done and what I had, like, not, like, seriously, but I had previously in my brain theory crafted of, like, hey, if I was going to simulate card game anime and also just that general kind of vibe, what would I do? Probably Powered by the Apocalypse. Powered by the Apocalypse is a really good idea for, like, imitating TV genres, you know? Mm -hmm. um, the games of that I've run pretty thoroughly uh, is, you know, The Sprawl. Uh, that, at least, I think, leans a little more towards... Because um, I don't think there's actually a TV uh, touch point for it. But definitely imitates the vibes of, like, a classic cyberpunk short story. Um, or, or a novel. But, like, Apocalypse World is definitely, like... Feels like a... Uh, a prestige TV drama type thing, like a like a Walking Dead, or um, though obviously the sh the 
tabletop RPG super predates that show. Um, the Last of Us TV show is definitely something that like could work with an apocalypse world type scenario. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Monster Arts is just, hey, y'all, you ever seen a Supernatural, a True Blood, a Vampire Diaries? Uh, I mean, I go through the classic Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but that's, yes. that's also old, very baby. much Buffy. Yeah, um, that's another thing that's on Hulu. <laughs> that's that Buffy, like. that's Buffy and Angel. Oh God, man, those are also on Hulu. And like, I've I've thought I need to get to. Uh, that's all because of Grim uh, Grimbeard, though. He did a review on a Buffy the Vampire Slayer game, and I'm like, shit, I should sit down and watch Buffy sometime. I kind of missed that when it was on syndication, and now yeah. obviously it's like to tangent again because we're power washing. That's kind of a weird thing because it's it's like very explicitly come out that like the reason why those shows are like good and memorable is because Joss Whedon is kind of a control freak piece of shit, and those those actors are fucking killing themselves to do that show. They're shooting like you know, 80-hour weeks. Um, fucking Elijah Dushku had to get legally emancipated from her parents to avoid child labor laws. There was so much shooting on Buffy. Like, that's wow. how long, how much they were working a week. The result, though, is that for most of the seasons, a product that's very high quality. So it's like kind of, you know, taking that in stride to get in there. But, yeah, it's like something I definitely want to get in there. But, uh... Like, yeah, Monster, Monster Arts is at, literally has a Buffy archetype with The Chosen. Sorry, I'm not power washing because I'm taking a drink of water. But Do um, not drink directly from the power washer. Oh, that's not good <laughs> yeah, that's, that's You're just getting this straight from a, from a hose hookup, my guys. No, don't drink hose water. That's not purified. Um, the other way, the way I've also always pitched Monster Hearts uh, as an RPG is Monster Arts was written with the idea that, like, I think every, like... I can say this, you know, every slightly elitist nerd, counting myself in this in this brush, but everyone who heard or read Twilight and was like, this sounds terrible, I could do that better, that's Monster Hearts. Monster Hearts is the game where you read about Twilight and you're like, this sounds dumb, I bet I could do a better job. That's that's the <laughs> game for it. Um, but yeah, it certainly got those vibes, but that's, you know, those are all, like I said, like TV drama type stuff. So I, I think that, like, reading through it, Perfect Draw seems like a great idea for that, because that's absolutely what I would have done. Um, but they've also done a very bold thing of just, like, <gasps> stripping the system down to just fucking three stats, and then also bolting on an entire tiny card game mechanic to it. Um, it's very interesting. I would probably like to read it more thoroughly, but it's got it's got a vibe. I'm definitely interested when they actually go to, to like, print with their finished product about picking it up, because they seem like they're doing stuff. I mean, I'm, they can't call it a, a Yu-Gi-Oh! tabletop RPG because that run, run into licensing problems, but looking at their art direction and, like, their... Like I said, it's a very robust playtest document. They've got a full whole setting built out of, like, nah, this is just Yu-Gi-Oh!, but instead of being Egyptian, it's Greek. Very well done. Cool. Sorry, itchy nose. I don't... Honestly, I don't know if I can be a... I don't know if I can be a kid solving everything with card games. Like, I was looking at it, I was all like... No, Lucky, Lucky, like Lucky likes being an adult too much. I think that's probably one of my foibles. I think there's I was like, there is room for that with some of the archetypes they've got. They've got a very, I think, good playbook system. But you're right that mm. it is absolutely like I want, one of the examples they have. Like I think it's called like the supporter, where it's like you can be the guy who runs the local card shop, kind of a thing, or oh, probably, the teacher who's got to help these kids. I could probably do that. I could not be one of them kids though. Yeah, I, I don't think I could. I think that's probably one of the reasons I was like, I was like, yeah. I, like I said, I I think they've got some good good options on there. It, it, they wear their inspirations very clearly on their on their sleeves. The very obviously Kaiba inspired playbook literally has "screw the rules, I have money" as a move. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate this. Um, they also have that because that's from the Bridge series. They have an actual Kaiba quote about your ace monster, which is. My pride, my soul, you know, my blank, which is in the anime, was Kaiba was like, the blue eyes, white or dragon. So, like, they know what they're doing, and I appreciate that very strongly. Um, I don't know if I would run that with the core, the, our, our, our classic group. Like, if you're down to be in it, I can set some stuff up, but I would probably try and grab the fail portrayal team for that content, I think quote, unquote, honestly. If you know, if you need... If you needed someone who doesn't know actually anything about anything about games, I exist just so you can explain shit to me. Because th that is something that is always in the fucking anime. There's someone who doesn't know anything, and they use that guy as a reason to explain shit. 
I can be that dude, but don't actually expect me to be playing Picard games. I will run ye old fucking card shop or, you know, fucking something else. I don't know. But yeah, it's 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 an interesting vibe that I think lines up fairly well with what I would have done myself, and that's like I said, I'm a homebrewer, but I also appreciate when games just do cool stuff and I don't have to worry about it, because homebrewing's a lot of work, y'all. It is. Listen, I have two documents up right now. They're both my fucking documents for my homebrews. They are very sparse. I had to do the thing with fucking Singularity War where I had to adjust the, the font size down one because it was getting <laughs> yeah. too long. <laughs> and it's still like 365 pages and we're not done, but it's really long. This is something I will say that I am not great at is a thing that real life publishers have to do because they have like, you have to come up with a, a reasonable amount of size to print the book to print the damn thing um but I, I definitely have a little bit of scope creep and stuff because like some of it's my own just i get in the zone but other times it's when players start talking about stuff and i'm like shit i gotta come up with the whole thing for that no um, don't worry when we actually make a pdf we're gonna make it we're gonna make the font even smaller and we're gonna put it into two columns yeah that is actually what what rpgs do um and but then you'll also be able to do like the full screen effect on adobe and, and like, make it blow up yep Like he knows what's up. But, um... PDF and fine print. <laughs> but yeah, no. Like, it's... I, I don't have to homebrew, because uh, I'll get, get in the feature creep, and, like, I'm not always good at cutting stuff. I've already made some decisions with Singularity War where I'm like, no, no, we're gonna... I, I'm... I have ideas for, like, more detailed setting stuff. Uh, and examples related directly to, like, the areas we've explored with, like, Bay City and Pacifica, but I'm like, no, no, we're going to cut that from the core book, and that'll be a separate thing later for Pocket Lint. Because I know you guys are interested in that. God knows how much dumb Pocket Lint for Jensakai I've done. We are so food-obsessed in that setting. <laughs> and it's probably all, well, not entirely, because I've, I've gotten in the hole myself, but... Definitely you saying that Porter would cook food was like, oh shit, now I'm going to have to come up with some ideas. And then it's just like, I get in the hole. I get in the research hole very easily, chat. But having games that just do stuff, I'm like, that's rad. Games are rad. Tabletop games, really cool. I wish more people would, would, would uh, play them and play games that are not D&D. &D. And stop trying to make everything D&D. There's multiple oh, perfectly good Star Wars RPGs. You don't need to put, make Star Wars D&D. That reminds me. I did hear that um, in the next um, live uh, letter from the producer, uh, Yoshi P in the game, you're going to be taking a look at the Final Fantasy XIV uh, tabletop RPG. Yes. And so that could be that could be exciting. I don't know if they're actually playing or just looking at it, but we will see. I mean, they showed some promo images of, like, a, a, a standard box set, so I'm, like, I'm, I'm down to see what's up with that. They might just open it up and show it out, but that looks neato. They're they're a little late to the party with the, like, I think we're in technically our post-COVID boom in the tabletop space as well, but, like, also D&D &D did just kind of shoot them in the foot last year, so, like, there's room. We're at three hours now. This is take and uh, this job has taken the majority of our time so far. We're getting there. We're at ninety-two percent. Yeah, we'll get it. Uh, then we'll probably have to consider if we want to. I'll see what other jobs are unlocked. If we want to do another one, because we're at about a normal three-hour time, and I'm getting a little, a little, a little pecorino. Goop. Yeah, getting a little of the goop, but that's because I'm just like in general tired. But I also could just like refill up my water and you know. Do one more. We'll see. We'll see what we got. Like I said, probably don't want to do another really big job. But we hope you've enjoyed our inaugural uh, power washing and talking about shit stream. Talking about a lot of shit. Hey, if you're curious about our thoughts about the FGO event, the event is good. I don't know how I, I got the impression that some people were not super keen on this. Yeah, I know. Same. I was uh, like, I mentioned this in our chat. I need whoever uh, thought this event was bad to come kneel before me so I can take their fucking head, because clearly they aren't using it, and I can use some new lawn decorations. Like, I, I don't know if it was just, like, you know, pure aesthetics vibes, where, like, people were not sure about the character designs for, like, Taisui and, uh, you know, the Trung Sisters, or what. Um, or, I don't... I do kind of feel like before LB6 came out in English, people were kind of like, man, this Morgan chick, she's everywhere, man. Um, which obviously yeah. no longer flies now that we've played Lost Belt 6. 
Uh, so I don't know, but like this event is good. It's just got like it's got the the yokes you'd expect. It's got some of the serious. Every character who's actually like part of the crew makes sense, you know. Um, love what we did with the villain. I don't know if I want to wing out spoilers for people who are behind. No, I'm no still catching up, so we won't. We go into no depth, but like, no, nah, it's a good vibe. No, I love it. I love the twist. I love the the climax. I love the fucking art direction. Like, you saw what I mean about the fucking semi remiss hook? Yeah, no, that was a great little moment. And also her putting her hat back on, but, like, the way they yeah. did that that shift. Um, all the fucking callbacks. Yes, Chad, I built the arcade. Of course I did. You know. Um, I built the library. Yeah, like... I, oh, and the fact that you can just freely reset everything so I can see what, like, the library scene is like if I feel like it and stuff. Like, it's, it's good. Um, I don't... I expect that, like, some people will probably get the, like, the three-week fatigue. I'm okay with three, because that felt, I felt like I haven't had an urgent, you know, desire to clear the, clear every new quest every time, you know? Uh, you still might want to get a little bit on that burn, like, the, the MP quest and stuff. You still need, like, 300 of, like, Yeah, I'm types. working on it. I've, I've gotten one of them, so I, I need three more copies, but I'm at that point at least, so. Yeah. I can, I can slam a gem that out while, you know. This is the advantage of watching, I mentioned earlier, you know, watching back the Digital One Tamers dub is it's dubbed so I can do other shit because I don't have to feel compelled to read the subtitles. I don't think it's repetitive. I think it's it's just classic problem solving. You run into a problem, what do you do? You back. Le Legendary, are you just someone who's just going to beat your head against it until it breaks or you break? Nah, you got to sit back and think. Well, and I, I, they do a decent job of, because of, you know, introducing new water kin, of, like, switching it up every time, at least. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like they are kind of, like, because I believe this is our first, like, truly three-week event, besides, you know, some of the, like, early events that were very weirdly timed. Like, technically, I think it took three weeks for, like, summer one and two, but that's because they had two parts, you know? Um, so I feel like they're feeling out, like, how much farming is, is, is farming, but, like, yeah, it's, it's fine. Don't mind, look, I just dropped, dropped, dropped off a fucking, like, three-story roof. Totally fine. No problems. Oh, yeah. You're, uh... We, I talked about this. There are some heights that would normally be unsafe in this game. You're fine. Your ankles? Indestructible. They're full of power-washing fluid. Oh, it's like, I, it's, that's that's perfect. That's why we're wearing the full the full body suit, right? We're just actually water ourselves. No, we're just non newtonian fluids. Yeah. We're just slime people. We're just the goopers. So, uh, you know, we can't be destroyed. Ha! I love it. Send it. Oh, in that plank. Uh, let's see. What's left? What's left? What's left? Oh, these are still... Yeah, some of the materials these are made out of are holding that dirt in. This one. I, I think it's a little bit. Uh, I think it's. I think it's fine. It's a little bit repetitive. Like, again, you like. I think you also want to avoid like getting too complex with problems because then you start losing people. Yeah. No, the plot's actually pretty easy to follow, which is good. Um, yeah. And like, I, I think that they didn't. You know, they didn't run out of I like we didn't stretch the point where we like ran out of ideas. I do kind of feel like uh, Summer One Part Two, for instance, with the boars, which is where you're going to get a lot of comparison here, is like some of the the construction quests you did for that were just silly, dumb. We they were, were just, dumb. We can say it. Yeah, they were they were dumb. We were doing them just to do them because oh well, you had to build this many things in the first half, so you have to build this many things in the second half. This doesn't feel like it. Like all of them, I think, make sense. No, nah, this is this is uh this is a uh, summer one of Redux. Yeah. And then I actually like part one, the good part. Yeah. The cons are funny, the characters you're hanging out with, uh, you see a lot of cameos. Yeah. It's fun seeing your island get built up. You know. You you get to interact with the cons more than just one off jokes. Yeah. And I especially like they do the thing where like uh you know Lambda's number one fan gets the ribbon, you know? Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, I love that. Yeah. Like, it's actually, like, there's some people who've been doing, like, deep dives on, like, characters, like, Melt's character in it and stuff, you know, just... Yeah. Ugh. Oh, no, it's good. 
And you get, good. Some, you, you get probably your most quality, like, deep dive of Melt's character uh, since, I would say, probably the CCC event? Yeah. Like, she obviously uh, she shows up in, in Summer because it's her summer form, but it's Summer. She's mostly just there to fucking, you know, fuck around and do water shows and, uh, you know, possibly sentence you to build figurines for forever. It's a joke. Yeah. This event is still a joke like Summer, but because it's not Summer, it's got some extra vibes. Um, and I just fucking love that, like, the Morgan's just here to goof off. Like, this is not a spoiler. There's a moment later when she sh she actually interacts with the core cast where Da Vinci is like, so you're the one who was ray shifting without permission all the time. <laughs> it was you! Because she's just been fucking, you know, running around having fun, hanging out with cons, hanging out with Hobbitrot. Just saying... <laughs> Yes, I'll pay you back for letting me hit you so much. I'm just like, thank you. Uh, God, yeah. I love it. Uh, it's so good. It's such, like, again, like after like, um, like after doing reruns and you know just like all these other little events, like this event, like the the Seamoth just felt like really good. It wasn't. It's not too intense, but it's not too light. It's just this nice balance of serious and comedic. And, you know, having to put in the work that, you know, just vibes pretty good. Yeah, it's a it's a classic FGO event. Uh, I don't remember who the writer of this was. I know that Nasu said he had to go back and do some dialogue passes on a couple of characters like Morgan, and I think maybe Melt? Or was it Arresh? But, um... Also, hey, got, got some Arresh this event. It was all good. It was all relevant. Uh, but, like, I, I think this is actually, like, one of the... the newer Tight Loon writers, so, like, the fact that it's so well-written and, and, like, has that really good breathing is, is very solid, you know? And it'll be interesting to see. I think our next, like, big event event will be Golden Week, so it'll be, uh, our, uh, Learning with Manga again. Gonna hang out with Super Bunyan. I've heard people had some complaints about that event, too, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, like I said, when we, we, when we got the initial, like, previews with JP... Like, the fact that it is kind of like all three of the crew are crammed into one servant is like, okay, I appreciate you not nickel and diming me, but also you've, like, made it so if I want to get any of these characters, i got to chase the SSR kind of a thing. Um, but I don't really remember, good or bad, any really speak about the event story itself. Which can obviously, that can be kind of, like, damning with faint praise, you know? But, like I said, mm -hmm. I always got the impression that, like, there was something about Sea Monster Crisis that people weren't keen on. Yeah, I know. That's like, I for the life of me, I can't remember exactly what they said, but I just I don't remember anyone talking about Sea Monster Crisis in a positive light. Yeah, I just I I did not get the vibe that people vibed with this event, uh, and absolutely they must have vibed with it because, like I said, it's it's pretty well written. It's pretty cool. Oh no! Uh, look forward to. We'll talk more. We'll talk more in depth about it uh, this Friday. Yeah, we'll have we'll a we'll have a full classic deep dive, and we'll be able to pull it off because the event will be mostly complete. I do think it's kind of interesting. Like, like I said, I said before this event came out, I was very curious that like out of all of the events that came out this year in JP, Nazi was like, I think that one was the most interesting. I can kind of see it now. Yeah. No. Same. Um. I definitely remember some interview comments that people have been digging up where he talked about how, like, normally they, like, put the welfare front and center, right? Uh, but yeah. this one, for story reasons, they kind of had to hold him back. Obviously, for us, the, the complete spoiler impact is lost. But, like, they just had to announce, like, hey, by the way, you want to clear this event to unlock a welfare servant? And kind of see how I that mean, in the, the grand writing. scheme of things, it makes sense, and I kind of like it. Yeah. Uh, but also, at least for me, like, I didn't... I st honestly, I still don't understand a lot about Twice Shinjin's like deal. Um, so like, the fact that I, I knew look, who I, he I was like didn't change anything. I'm still like, I don't fucking understand this character. Again, it's 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 very weird. It's it's very esoteric. It is. It is. It's Eastern it's, esoterica it's... and occultism, which is like my jam, but also like parts of it are not my greatest vibe. Like I, I think, um, I think I've seen like a a 
a Taisui type object. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a weird thing like that. I don't even know if it's an enemy, but like, there's a thing like that in like Okami. Uh, but otherwise, I like. Yeah, Taisui is not something that I remember a lot. Come at this from a, from a different angle. Kind of like, oh, actually no, I think. Kind of makes me make, think of Kujata though. Big thing with a bunch of eyes on it. Yeah. Well, Kujata has more than just eyes, but still. Shit, do we have a do we have a fucking regular ladder? Yeah, it's over here on the monkey bars. Uh, I've been using a... it. Oh, okay. How do you think I can get up here? That's fair. Hold on, I'm going to relocate the site over here because I already did that roof. No, but I'm gonna I'm gonna use the uh, the extendo trick because it's a very hard angle to get the fucking top oh, okay. ridge of the thing in there. So we're gonna, we're gonna like crouch on this ladder and like do some weird angles. I've got like my, my, like I said, my grippiest shoes ever on. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Like, gotta do some weird angles here. I have to jump from like location to location. The grip is so good. Can't even lift my feet. Oh, we're done. Here. Okay. Uh, 99% done. Let's see here. We got the climbing pole guards. The climbing pole a little, but it's a, it's a weird tower one. trans. Oh, we got a lot of little shit. Yeah, there's a lot of little stuff in these towers. Oh, one of the tic tac toe dies are fucking not done. Son of a bitch. Well, which I've one just is that? fallen down here, so let me figure out which one it was. Ah, it's this one. Oh, 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 it's the underside. The... Got it. There, got the cargo nets. And there is some stuff on the bottom of this. Oh, oh boy, that's really weird. Really... I'm getting real up close and personal. Got that. Oh, no, there's gonna be some stuff up in the towers. Some shelves and stuff. Sorry, my brain was firing, you know, neurons to just fill talk space, and I just did the fucking brain drift into my brain suddenly started playing. Everybody's working for the weekend. And I just like, brain, why? <laughs> it's not relevant right now. It's Monday. Though I do, I do love the, the what a week, Captain, it's Monday meme. Nah, I know that vibe constantly. All right. All right, you. Where are you hiding the shit? Where are you hiding the shit? All right, that's the strut. Oh, wait, it's right there. Where are you hiding? There it is. Got it. Okay. Uh, it's on the bottom. No, still, still cooking. Where the fuck there we go. Got the Let's see. We still got the oh, the slide guards. Really, man, I must have missed those. Uh, oh, yeah, these are the slide guards. The platform. Right. That bit. Can I go up the climbing um, pole? No. Got that bit. <gasps> Uh, tower lower walls. Uh, which one? Which one? Which one? Not those one. So maybe the one of the ones over here. Oh also, wait. By the way, Chad, I'm going to show you new tech. You can open up your list of everything and click on it, and it will highlight what you need to clean. So hey, these two stools are not done. Let's finish up those stools. Oh shit. I didn't know I could do that. Yeah, I know. Just uh, click it in your list, and it'll it should highlight flashing white. Sometimes it takes a second to kick in. But it's good to locate exactly what you're missing. Let's see, lower tower wall. Ah, it's this um, one. We're gonna. Okay, got that one. Uh... Okay. So, what are the roof support struts? The... Ah, these things. Wow, I fully got up on this roof. Okay, don't know how I did that. Chat, you're gonna Magic. have to figure that one out for me. Watch it in the replay. powers to fucking slot that in here and get up in here. There we go. Yeah, just that easy. Oh, let's be on the other side here. 
Yeah, there it is. Got it. Drop the monkey bars. Oh no, the monkey bars. No, okay, yeah. We got all this real good. Uh, tower trends. Tower trim, tower trim, tower trim. Where's the tower trim? That's port strut. That's right tower there. tabletop shelter. What is that? Cargo net. Yes, your dirt sensing mode is vital to this game. The problem is, is when the dirt's so little, you don't see it immediately. Yeah, okay, what's tower trims? Is this tower trim? No, that's a vertical strut. Tower roof. That's a port strut. Port struts, vertical struts, wall. Oh, the trim is the bottom shit. Where the, oh. the tower meets the mat. Oh, okay. Those are the struts. Yeah, that's gonna be very fine ass work. Oh, this one. That one. Oh, we still got a bench in a bin. What? Uh, that bench is clean. And this bench is this, really clean. That bin this is bin really clean. Is, this one is not. Ah, this bench over here is not all the way cleaned. Let me guess. It's going to be the underside. Oh, it's this thing. Oh, oh, I know exactly what the problem is. Whoops. I was working on this earlier. I fucked up. So I'm pretty sure I was working on this bench earlier. There we go. Got the tip stop shepherd. Come on. I'm hiding your goop. Bench. Uh, we can get the legs a little bit here. There we go. Yeah! Alright. Time lapse. Let's go! Woo! Yeah, look at me working that Stegosaurus. Bloop. It's just crouching in the corner. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, so our choices are the detached house and the golf cart. Well, we can do the golf cart before we call it a day. All right. So we have been going for about three, 320. The mayor. I think it's Jeff. Jeff is on the 12th. All right. Blast it! Destroy golf cart. This will once again take no time at all with two people. I do appreciate they put these redo levels in here, especially to give you just a little bit extra cash. Also, Jesus Christ, Mr. Mayor. You must have took this into the water and then into the sand pit. Yeah, are you, uh, are you trying to play out of the water hazards? Saw a gator. I don't care what anyone says, gators on a golf course is the vibe I love. Especially when they're chill. Yeah, they do. I remember this is fucking this little video I saw of like two golf players at a um two golf players at a course and they both had like just a gator chilling. One guy saw the gator and fucking, you know, jump and kinda of skittered away. The other one just kinda of kicked the gator in the tail and sent it into the water and just kept on going. I'm like, yeah, I love this vibe. Oh no, I saw I saw a video like that recently earlier of gate um of a fuck of uh, a pack of ruse just going up to this lady golfer just being like, hey, what you doing? I was like, yeah, I love that shit. Animal 
Bubbles just hanging out doing stuff. I love it. Rear canopy struts. Probably. Inside. Probably these things here. But... Oh, wait. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Done and done. Get ready to watch this go. Yeah, we're so fast. The, the time lapse does not like this. We are fucking teleporting. <laughs> also, by the way, this is a subplot you should keep track of, chat. The mayor's cat, Ulysses, has gone missing. Yeah, that only leaves a detached house. That would take us quite a while. So I think that'll be where we wrap up our first Power Wash Simulator stream. Uh, hope Woo! you guys have had a lot of fun. Uh, I know we did, just kind of, you know, yapping about stuff. Having a good day. About stuff. Having a good time. Having a good time. But thanks so much for for tuning in there, and we'll uh, we'll be continuing this. Like I said, we're making pretty good pretty good progress. Oh. But uh, it's it's a breaksy time. We'll see you back tomorrow for more uh, fail portrayal, and uh, Wednesday for more Final Fantasy the Fourteen. So thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll uh, we'll catch you guys later. Good night, everybody.